inspired by the banks of the rapid running Ohio. Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati sold out today for Shula Bowl II as the Miami Dolphins meet the Cincinnati Bengals. October 1st has dawned gray but warm in Cincinnati. Game time temperatures in the mid 70s. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cincinnati. Tom Hammond and Bob Trumpy ready to bring you the second meeting between Don and David Shula. You know, Bob, so far in this season, the AFC seems to be uh, bowing to the Miami Dolphins, the class of the league so far, and they've done it without big numbers from Dan Marino. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're 3-0, and and in Dan Marino's career, he's had 49 300-yard passing performances. In 1995, he's yet to even come close, and still, they are 3-0. and It is rather surprising. On the other side of the field, there's a quarterback trying to get a little national respect. Jeff Blake of the Bengals. Yeah, he wears number eight, one of his uh, few opportunities to be shown nationally. He said, we want attention not only to me and our team, but our receivers. Eight touchdowns, one interception, a very athletic quarterback. He shares the spotlight today with Dan Marino. Hopefully he can get some attention. And there is David Shula in his fourth season as the Bengals head coach and facing the all-time winningest coach, his dad, Don Shula. And David is looking for his first ever win over dad in two games when he was wide receiver coach with the Colts as offensive coordinator as receiving coach with the Bengals and last season the first ever meeting in professional sports between father and son head coaches won by the Dolphins and Don Shula. Yeah, Don doesn't discriminate though. He beats most other head coaches, son related or not. So <laughs> no question. He's not picking on Dave. Lee Johnson set to kick off for the Bengals as the Dolphins won the toss. And Irving spikes and O.J. McDuffie, the deep man for the Dolphins. Shula Bowl 2 is underway. O.J. McDuffie halfway through the end zone will down it there for the touchback. So the Dolphins will take over on their own 20. They'll line up this way. Richmond Webb, of course, the mainstay of that offensive line at left tackle. It's a Hall of Fame backfield. Marino, of course, with Byers, Fryer, Eric Green. They are some great receivers for Marino to look at. Gary Clark will be the third wide receiver on passing down. And here is Dan Marino hitting 63% of his passes this season. Five touchdowns, three interceptions. McDuffie in motion. Handoff to Kirby, the tailback. Spinning away from one tackle and downed after a gain of two or three yards by Bracey Walker, the strong safety. Bengals line up defensively this way with a switch. Dan Ilkinson, Dan Wilkinson, who had been playing right defensive end, has been moved back inside to tackle. Francis Tovar McDonald, the linebackers, Roger and Rod Jones, Bracey Walker and Darrell Williams. And when they come with their Panther, that's their nickel defense. Leonard Wheeler is the fifth defensive back. Second and seven for Miami. Marino's first pass. Across the middle, dropped by Green and almost intercepted. Bracey Walker had a chance at it after it popped off the hands of Eric Green. Dan Marino does make the right choice, but this is double rotation coverage. You're going to see the middle linebacker, Tovar, pick up the tight end, Eric Green. Dan Marino almost makes the completion, but that is excellent coverage by the middle linebacker. You'll see the two safeties converge there to knock the ball away. Green has caught only seven passes so far, and there are some that say it, he's been a non-factor for yeah, the offense. I don't think so. I think what he adds to the to the running game and just the size of this kid's body on third down situations, he's already paid dividends. Bengals have their dime defense, six defensive backs. Marino from the gun. Protection and time, and he's got a man wide open. It's Hill, and Hill has running room down the sideline, caught from behind by Bracey Walker after a big gain on the play. Randall Hill down the sideline for the big play. It covered 54 yards. How about that throw? You see zone coverage when Hill gets outside of the corner. There's no reason for the corner to bite on that. Wheeler should not have bitten on that. It was a good pump make by Dan Marino. Hill, excellent speed. Goes right by, and the first big play of the game, of course, last week, 
<laughs> the Bengals allowed several big plays. They made Chris Chandler of the Oilers look like a Joe Montana. So you can imagine that Marino was licking his chops. First down attempt. Protection again off Byers and incomplete. James Francis, the linebacker, covering Byers out of the backfield. When uh, Miami can put Cincinnati in their nickel and dime package, Miami is at a tremendous advantage. Uh, Cincinnati's defensive backfield is not deep, and Don Shula has been in this game long enough to know you look at tape and you find the team's weakness, and then you try to exploit that as best you can. So it's four wide receivers is something that he wants to exploit against this defensive backfield all day. Second and ten from the Bengal 18. First drive of the game. Reno appears to be changing his way. And it to Kirby with a up the middle. Spinning his way to the ten yard line where he's down by Darrell Williams. In the red zone this season the Miami Dolphins have been 14 times with six touchdowns and six field goals so all but two times they have come away with points and let me make a comment about Terry Kirby this is his first game on AstroTurf since he had that devastating knee injury uh, he and Keith Byers both underwent knee surgery last uh, year he said this is a big game I need that early first hit so I can regain confidence in my knee Kirby was talking to us yesterday and saying uh, that one hit was sort of getting him over the hump I don't know if that was it or not here he is again with a blocker, he is inside the five-yard line. Darrell Williams finally got him with Big Richmond Webb leading the way and gets a pat from Terry. A very good idea. Running backs, quarterbacks, always give those offensive linemen a little pat anytime you can. Both the guard Sims and the tackle Webb pull. You see Kirby right on the hip of Richmond Webb, and he just. Uh, that's when Webb just plants a defensive back. <laughs> Terry Kirby says, thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks was, a lot. It was Bracey Walker that was uh, flattened by Richmond Webb. First and goal from the five for the Dolphins. Pitches to Kirby. Block on the corner. He hurdles and got only to the three before John Copeland throws him back. This young man's injury last year to Miami, I think, probably hurt them more than any other injury they had. He is that back that can carry the ball and is an excellent receiver. So you don't have to substitute anyone for Terry Kirby to be a real big factor in the game. The other thing that Terry suffers from is asthma. Um, activity induced asthma. And when he moves from South Florida up to the Midwest with the pollen and stuff, has to use an in inhalator to make sure he's all right for the game. He was sniffling a little bit yesterday. Eighth play of the Dolphin drive, second and goal from the three. Quick drop by Marino, looks to the other side and misfires for Green. Good. Pass was a little wide and Rod Jones was there in coverage. How could that not be intercepted? There were four Cincinnati hands there with a chance at it. The intended receiver was Eric Green. Marino looks way to the right, then comes to, over to the outlet. Now watch the Bengal hands here. One, two. I think they knocked it away from each other, didn't they? <laughs> they may have. Miami has converted both third downs on this drive, which began at their own 20 with a touchback off the opening kickoff. It's third and goal at the three. Marino for Fryer. No good. Covered by Leonard Wheeler. Fryer was out of the end zone. Now Don Shula with a fourth and goal at the three will send Pete Stoyanovich on to try a field goal. Well, they've had so much luck in the red zone as we just documented it. Yeah, surprising it as quick as they struck the Randall here, Hill here. You think oh, this is going to be easy? Just get it in the end zone. And the Bengal defense regrouped after a first and goal from the five. Soistil Janovic, a 21-yard attempt. The punter, John Kidd, will hold. On its way and through. So Pete Stoyanovic puts Papa in top. 3-0, Dolphins. On the information superhighway, you need more than the latest technology. You need a very powerful drive.
Chevy Blazer. With the Vortec V6, it's nice to know it's there. In business, you can't always count on having enough time. But you can count on AT&T, because only AT&T guarantees you a competitive price. Our 1-800-COMPARE Center will give you an immediate side-by-side -side price comparison. And we're so sure that our prices are competitive that if you don't agree, we'll give you one month's worth of long distance up to $500. These days, you can't count on much, but you can count on AT&T for the life of your business. How cold will it be? How late will it be? How far from home will you be when your battery decides to die? It's hard to say. So if your battery's more than three years old, don't chance it. Maybe this is the time to replace it with the one that's America's most trusted. The Die Hard battery. Before yours dies, get the Die Hard at Sears Auto Center. Miami Dolphins take the early 3-0 lead on Cincinnati. Getting the field goal from Stojanovic, who is set to kick off now. For those who have not heard, when uh, Don comes to town and David's here, uh, the family kind of collects. But the siblings, <laughs> brothers and sisters, everybody gangs up on Dad. They're all on David's side, staying at David's house. So it's him against the family. Including a... Uh, Mike Shula, who is an assistant coach of the Chicago Bears, here today because the Bears are on a bye week. Short kick by Stojanovic. David Dunn takes it at about the 13. And Dunn returns it across the 25 before he's thrown back by Pat Johnson and others. So the Cincinnati offense with its first chance. These are the M&M boys. They've got M&M dispensers <laughs> and everything else around their lockers. They are much maligned, the offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals. In the backfield, Jeff Blake, the quarterback. He's had an outstanding start to the season. He's passed for over 1,100 yards so far. Pickens and Scott are both very capable receivers, and they will not switch. They'll stay in their base offense even on third and long. on first down. Oh, protects it broke down and the ball is loose. The Bengals got it back. Kevin Sargent fell on it. Marco Coleman is the man that knocked the ball loose from Blake. One too many pumps. Right. He really had enough time. If he had seen that the coverage was there, he should have thrown it away. He has had decent protection, but from uh, the backside of him, Coleman just knocks the ball right out of his hand. Then Kevin Sargent, 77, quick to get on the football. It's an inauspicious big beginning. This is a decent pass rush defensive line. Not a great one for Miami. Good pressure there. I think they ruled it incomplete pass in second and ten. Blake rolling for protection. Now decides to run with a couple of moves. He's across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Tackled by Chuck Klingbeil. Dolphins line up defensively this way. Klingbeil one of the men up front. For the Dolphins with Coleman, Bowens and Cross. Amongst the linebackers, Singleton is the leading tackler, but Brian Cox, the man that always makes things happen, in a tremendous secondary led by Troy Vincent, who has three interceptions already, including one for a touchdown. Buckley comes in for the fifth defensive battle. That one blown dead before it got underway. Tom, I got to go back to that, uh, that hit on Jeff Blake. That was a very generous ruling. Prior to the snap, Ball start, number 62, offense. Five yards, third down. Bob McElwee with a call against Cincinnati. It was Todd Kalis. If I can continue, that was a very generous choice by the officiating crew to rule that that ball was a, uh, an incomplete pass because I think uh, Coleman knocked that right out of his hand. Three nothing Miami, first quarter. Dolphins facing a third and ten. Blake across the middle, his man fell down. They want a flag, and there it is. Eric Bieniemy was the intended receiver, defended by Aubrey Beavers, and uh, the interference flag came flying. It's interference number 53, defense, first down.
Here's the matchup. You've got linebacker on running back. Here's Beavers. The enemy's going to run the pattern. There's no question there's contact. The enemy's not a particularly big guy, and he kind of runs into Beavers. Beavers doesn't put his hands up, but you can't even shield the receiver. That is a good call. So the interference on Beavers keeps the Cincinnati drive going. Here's Harold Green. A tough couple of yards before Dwight Hollier makes the tackle. And Jeff Blake seeing this game against Marino and the unbeaten Dolphins as a chance to gain some national respect. And this is just okay, Jeff Blake's 14th guy. start. 61. Uh, was cut by the New York Jets, was a sixth round draft choice, cut by the New York Jets uh, by Pete Carroll and his staff. Bruce Coslett was here and said, This kid's a great athlete. There's a lot of good qualities about him. Get him in here. Klingler gets hurt last year. He starts some games. This year he is a whoa. Well, was there movement to draw the offside on Tim Bowens? Nope, it'll Number be offside against, offside against Miami. Five yards. This is a little obvious. This is a little obvious, isn't it? <laughs> Bowens is probably the biggest defensive tackle in the league. Kazerski just takes one for the team, number 64. <laughs> Ouch. Defensive rookie of the year being taught by Joe Green. No telling what that kid might turn out to be. First round draft choice from Ole Miss. Blake goes deep down the sideline for Pickens, who can't get it. J.B. Brown was the defender. Pickens appeared to have a step, but couldn't quite catch up to the football. And that was excellent coverage by J.B. Brown. Uh, there was a little hand fighting going on from the beginning. You see the bumper one. Now watch when J.B. Brown gets close to him. See, they're fighting each other. That's allowable. Both looking back. Is contact? I don't know. Not. First time maybe, but the second time I thought it might at least be illegal contact. But, but who do you call it on? They were both using arms there, both looking back. I mean, these are big kids. They can handle that contact. I thought JB reached in a little bit. All right. We'll uh, register that complaint. <laughs> Green in motion. Quick drop, Blake. Batted right back in his face. Bowen's the man that got right in the face of Jeff Blake and gets a shove for his trouble. The Dolphins run a stunt. You're going to see 95 jump outside of Kalis, gets his arm up. Well, that's just unlucky on Jeff Blake's part because the receiver was open. Bowen's right place, right time. The pride of Oklahoma, Mississippi. Lee Johnson in punt formation for the Bengals on fourth down. With O.J. McDuffie, the deep man. There's Johnson and McDuffie. Pretty good punt by Johnson. McDuffie drifting backwards to the 12. Nowhere much to go. Takes it back to about the 18-yard line where James Joseph pounces on him. We'll take a break as the Dolphins get the ball back. Popping with flavor more flavor than ever. This fact too. It's the right thing to do. Popping with flavor. Bring those right crisp flavors. They're new. And the taste indulging right thing to do. Tangy sour cream and onion. Now more flavor. Less fat and less squeeze across your lips. Popping with flavor, bring those right crisp flavor. Once you pop, you can't stop. Jerry, we're about to meet Freddy Fast Feet. Oh, there he is. Yeah, how you doing, man? Hey guys, what's in the bag? McDonald's juicy quarter pounder with cheese. Two for two bucks, Mr. Half Size Halfback. Hey, I'll trade your autograph for them. Oh, hey, Mr. Rushmeister. I'll trade your autograph football. Ah, uh, it's not gonna happen, your rocket toast. Season tickets. Got, Got him. Skybox. <laughs> Now you can convert two bucks into two hot, tempting quarter pounders with cheese or two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg. But the clock's ticking, so hurry. And this just in. Superstar running back Barry Sanders is involved in some kind of major trade. Have you had your break today? There was a time when we didn't have a worry in the world. Today, well, we seem to be making up for it. That's why you need Chevy Lumina, a car you can trust. A car so well-engineered and affordable, you could have it paid off long before it needs its first tune-up. Chevy Lumina. Because someday you'll realize nobody's got enough money and everybody's got enough worries. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Chevrolet. 
the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. And by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? A look from Northern Kentucky at the Queen City of Cincinnati, the Shula Bowl. Shula Bowl 2 with Don leading Dave 3-0. Dolphins with the football after a 48-yard Lee Johnson punt. Marino play action. And a man wide open in the center of the field. The pass caught by Gary Clark. Finally dragged down by Darrell Williams, but Marino with another big strike. This one to Gary Clark, who catches the 666th pass of his career. Isn't that amazing? Most of them were the Washington Redskins, but this guy is a quality receiver. This is a zone run by the Cincinnati Bengals. He's just down through the middle. There wasn't much of a play action fake, but Steve Tovar, middle linebacker, didn't get back there to uh, shrink that area. That's a pretty easy completion for Dan Marino. There are the numbers coming into the game. It's good for 24 yards and a Dolphin first down. Already formally in the game. Gets the pitch from Marino. Cuts back. A takedown by James Francis at the 45, gain of about three, and the Bengal defense has its work cut out for it today. This is Larry Pecatello, the defensive coordinator of the Bengals. We asked him what his defense needed to do today against uh, Miami. Here's what he wanted. Stop the run with just seven. That's the front seven. Make the Dolphins work for every yard. Make tackle where ball is caught and get three turnovers. So far, it's not a good report for him, but it's early. <laughs> They did give uh, the Dolphins an easy one, a cheap one, the 58 yard pass to Hill on the first play. You know, with time, and McDuffie with a catch in Bengal territory. Driven back by Roger Jones, but not until he had the first down catch. You've got to get pressure on Dan Marino. If that's not your first priority when you play the Miami Dolphins, you're just asking. For a drubbing. Somehow you must get pressure in his face. And though the Bengals are ranked 27th defensively in the NFL, they do have 14 sacks, which is among the leaders. Yeah, well, you may not be able to sack him, but you must get pressure on him. Steve Tovar leading the defensive charge for Cincinnati. Yeah, interesting thing about Bernie Parmley, a special teams player, baseball background. Dan Marino liked this kid so much in practice, he personally went to Don Shula and said, look, get this guy in the lineup. And with the injuries to all the running backs last year, he was brilliant for the Dolphins. Comes into today's game as the leading rusher, averaging three and a half yards a carry. And Marino here in the first quarter has hit four of his first seven passes for 92 yards. Short completion, Keith Byers. And Byers inside the 35 to the 34. Steve uh, Roger Jones and Steve Tovar the tackle. And for Byers, that's 116 straight games with a reception. He comes out of the backfield, always been a feature of the Miami Dolphins offense. The running backs who can catch the ball and catch the ball well. Myers is the outlet receiver. Yesterday at practice, he, he, born and raised in Dayton. Yesterday at practice, there were an awful lot of uh, Byers relatives down here at Riverfront Stadium, seeking autographs, saying hello. Born in Dayton, went to Ohio State. Only Jerry Rice, among active players, has caught more consecutive passes. Flag down as Parmalee takes the pitch. Nearly broke free. Dragged down by Steve Tovar inside the 25. It appears to come back. It'll be against Miami. Illegal shift. Two men moving prior to the snap, and they did not reset. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. That covers it all. Yep, Bob McElwee spelling it right out. Interesting, you see Keith Byers there as a professional football player in paying back to the community of Dayton. He had a free football camp for kids. One of the kids there, Dan Wilkinson, first round draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals, who also grew up in Dayton. Did he ever grow up? He was, <laughs> he was over 300 pounds in the ninth grade. We know again the time and has his man, Gary Clark. Second reception for Clark. He's to the 16 yard line, tackled by Bracey Walker and the Cincinnati pass defense resembling Swiss cheese at the moment. Matt, for the last two weeks, uh, 
watch the end of this play and the talent of Gary Clark. Tom, when he makes the catch, now watch this quick move whoop, to avoid that tackle. I mean, that's the veteran that you get out of the uh, Washington Redskins. All those receptions made sure the catch makes that first tackler miss. Ball at the 19-yard line of Cincinnati. Miami with a first down. That play closes 20 yards. Harmony waiting for his blockers and then racing to the outside. Leonard Wheeler tackled him. He waited for, I think, Keith Sims to get in front of him and make a block. Yeah, there was traffic in, in front of him. They tried to get the down block on the corner. And watch what happens on the corner here. This is an excellent job. You see the pull by Sims. Byers the lead block. The linebacker kind of gets in the Sims way. Parmley very smartly waits for his personal protector and makes it a nice game. Parmley out of the game now as Terry Kirby returns on second and four. A little pressure on Marino and the ball comes loose and is intercepted. Andre Collins got the ricochet and picks it off for Cincinnati. Gary Clark, the intended receiver, bangles all around him, and the ball falls right into the arms of Andre Collins, his second interception of the season. Break for the Cincinnati defense, but the Bengals trail by three. Series. It's one ride you don't want to miss. Do you want to get a new computer? I'm not sure if I'm going to get a new computer. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a new computer. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a new computer. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a new computer. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a new computer. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a new 腕はいらないのよ。Had a dream the other day. Canines were running the show. There was something. Bring me the cat. <laughs> But if you want to be treated with respect, you gotta treat others with respect. Roll over. Whether they get around on four legs or two. Of course, just between us mutts, it was kind of gratifying. Old it's smooth, easy to drink. To see the whole world going to the dogs. Tuesday night, postseason baseball returns with a division series. The Reds battle the Dodgers. Plus, the Red Sox, the Braves, the Indians, the AL West winner, and the Wild Cards. Regional coverage at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific starts Tuesday night on NBC. Back to the turnover. Nice play by Jones. Uh, Clark is about to make the catch here. Watch 24 come up. Both arms underneath the elbows of Clark. Doesn't allow the reception. And then the lucky bounce to Andre Collins for the interception for the Cincinnati Bengals to stop that drive. Cincinnati corners have been toasted with regularity here early in the season. But Jones making a nice play there. Late with a handoff to Harold Green. Defense by the Miami Dolphins. He just met Green right at the line of scrimmage. And he falls forward for a yard or so. Trace Armstrong playing the run tough. Yeah, they, they're allowing just over 62 yards rushing per game. There's some big bodies in there. Bowens, Klingbile, very tough. And stand up most offensive linemen. Now Entman is in there, number 94, another big body along with Jeff Cross. Just over three minutes left in the first quarter. Bengals have only one first down. A draw play handoff to Green, and he bursts free for a moment. He's up to the 24 yard line, and that'll be close to a first down. Brian Cox finally made the tackle as David Shulis Bengals close to a first down. Now, this is not an offensive line in front of Jeff Lake that can stand there and just beat people up. They got to trick them a little bit. Go with the traps, go with the draws, go with the screens. If, if they can make the defense think. Uh, we're not really sure what's coming next. Next, that's when this offensive line functions best. 
Second first down for the Bengals. The Dolphins have six and lead three nothing. Quick pitch to Green on the sweep. And only a, a yard or so. Jeff Blake, the Bengals quarterback, feels uh, underpaid and underappreciated, but thinks this game could make amends. A lot of people are going to be watching Marino play, and hopefully they get a chance to watch me play also and uh, get a chance to look at my skills and how far I have came and developed. Um, people who coached me, people who uh, saw me play in my college years and high school years, it gives them a chance to see how much I've developed and came along in life. Jeff Blake, who had a brilliant record at East Carolina, setting or tying 32 records there. Pickens, the intended receiver, but the ball incomplete. Now Jeff Blake, 11-1 uh, and one as a senior at East Carolina. Not a school with a great reputation for big uh, football and all the rest of that stuff, but his, his offensive coordinator was Kevin Gilbride, who was with Houston for a number of years, now is with Jacksonville, and a great playmaker. The, the one problem that Jeff had is all black quarterbacks do. Most schools wanted to make him something else. He was such a gifted quarterback. He went to East Carolina because they said we want you to stay at quarterback. His and dad worked. His dad Emory had been his uh, offensive coordinator his senior year in high school, and he's one of the ones that urged him to stay at quarterback. And his dad had played in the CFL. Pickens with another catch and out of bounds. Enough for the first down. Troy Vincent covering Pickens. I said earlier, I think the pass was uh, incomplete, but it was complete to Pickens, short of the first down. This one, enough for the first. Two straight catches by Pickens. And this is the combination that the Bengals want to explore as best they can. Get the ball to Darnay Scott, 86, Carl Pickens, 81, and Jeff Blake. Figure out any way you can to get these guys the ball. This is where the talent lies on this offense. Melvin Tootin, who is a rookie from Syracuse, lined up as a tight end now. Normally a tackle, he's a 300-pounder. And once again, Tim Bowens comes charging through the line. And they'll step off five more. Prior to the snap, encroachment, number 95 defense. This is the... This is the softer, gentler Tim Bowens. He jumps over Kalis as opposed to cracking him in the jaw like he did with... Kazerski. Tom Alabadati uh, has taken his share of criticism over the years, but he's done a wonderful job with this defense. Yeah. This defense can play conservatively. There is no reason to take chances with it. You've got a great offense, you've got depth. Be conservative. Don't make dumb mistakes like that. Giving the Bengals first and five. And off to Green. Had a hole. Slam down, but he's across the 40 to the 43. Singleton and Atkins converging on him. And now a scuffle breaks out. And quickly uh, dispersed. It's a little early for fights in this game. Good blocking up front. Nice pull by Kayla, 62. It's hard to run outside on this Miami defense. Good active outside linebackers. But off tackle, you got a chance. Atkins on green, green on Atkins. They think better of it. Got about five yards, and they'll measure for the first down. And the measurement gives it to Cincinnati. So the Bengals have a little drive going. Green carried on that play out of the game. Eric Bieniemy is in for David Shula. Final seconds of the first period with the Dolphins up three. Cincinnati first down at its own 44. Backs, the enemy and Coughlin. Blake stands in the pocket. That short hop is intended receiver Carl Pickens. Cling Bile and Bowens from the center of the Miami defense putting the pressure on and the pocket collapsing around Jeff yeah, Blake. That was part of the problem. The other thing is you're going to see receivers go across the middle. And the picket line of linebackers, watch these linebackers as the receiver comes across the middle. They make it tough on him. If one pushes him, the other one's waiting for him, and that's where the ball was intended to go. So it's, they're going to make it tough on Pickens and Darnay Scott getting underneath that linebacker coverage. Blake is only two of his first six. Draw play, the enemy. Eric Bieniemy across the 45, 46 yard line. Marco Coleman and Chuck Klingbeil making the tackle there. And that play will bring the first quarter to a close. End of period number one at Riverfront Stadium. 
with the Miami Dolphins leading the Cincinnati Bengals 3-0. People come to service merchandise for lots of different reasons. It's price, it's quality, it's service. Shopping today is truly a social activity. It's an escape, it's fun. When the customers whip out their American Express card, they're making a wide selection. People use it to enjoy life. Here comes one. Oh, an 87 Buick station wagon. Got it. 74 Volkswagen Beetle. A 285 horsepower V8 six-speed 1996 Chevy Camaro Z28. Yeah, but what color? Welcome back to Cincinnati, and coaching a football team must have seemed the only logical profession for David Shula. As a four-year-old, he saw his dad get his first head coaching job with the Colts. Then when David was in high school, his dad won two Super Bowls. When dad won his 200th game, David was playing at Dartmouth. And when Dad claimed his 300th, David had a team of his own here in Cincinnati. Don Shula getting the ride after the record-breaking win in Philadelphia. And David Shula was uh, actually born in nearby Lexington, Kentucky, when his dad, Don, was an assistant on Blanton Collier's University of Kentucky staff. said that his uh, first football memory was at four years old getting on a bus to uh, go to the game with uh, the Baltimore Colts to play Cleveland in a championship game. Baltimore lost 27 to nothing. He said he saw Tom Maddy cry. First time he'd seen an adult cry in his presence. We told uh, Papa Don that story yesterday, and he said, oh, now the, the stories are coming out. He said, I imagine that was a traumatic scene. <laughs> Jeff Blake completing the pass. Catch made by Darnay Scott, his first of the game. Immediately bumped down by Troy Vincent, but he'll have Another Cincinnati first down. A little more protection now for Jeff Blake and a, another one of his favorite targets. You see Blake with an excellent delivery. Very strong. And Scott and Pickens, 86 and 81, both very willing to go up and get the football in traffic. These are two big, tough receivers. Perfect balance by Bruce Cosset calling the Cincinnati offense. Seven passes, seven rushes. Blake has his man, Pickens. Another first down as Carl Pickens with a turn in on Gene Atkins to make the reception. Last year, Pickens wore number 80. And he switched to 81. Tim Brown, Art Monk, two guys who wore 81. Excellent pattern. Big, tall receiver. Rangy has kind of a gimpy ankle. Didn't practice much this, this week, but a very powerful receiver. And, uh, can stand some hitting out there in the middle, Tom. 17 yards on that one. Blake stumbles coming away from center. Manages the handoff to Harold Green, but stopped for a loss by Trace Armstrong. And, and Tom, look at that defensive front of the Miami Thank Dolphins. You, You're going to see Jeff Blake trip on the, on the, but there's no push by the offensive line. Look, look at that. They haven't gained an inch there on this Miami front four. Front four playing the run awfully tough as they have all season long. It's second and 10 for Cincinnati. Actually lost about a half yard in Harold Green. Pitch to Green looking for a block. And he got it. Green with a cut up. He's inside the 20. Wrestled down at the 16 by Dwight Hollier. Big gain by Harold Green. Again now running off tackle not trying to get to the perimeter of the defense but go inside the linebacker outside the defensive end. Good job by 77 Sergeant. Nice lead block there by Cothran 29. Good break by Harold Green. Nice pickup. We just complimented the uh, Dolphin defense so the run game goes around it not through it. <laughs> 29 yards so far for Green. That one 14 of it. And upstairs Bruce Coslett continues to Call the plays for the Cincinnati offense, and hoping that Harold Green can 
flash the brilliance he showed in 92 when he gained 1,100 yards. There's a penalty flag. Delay of the game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, that's the feeling you get when you have a cheap one. Delay of game. But that's one of the problems with the Cincinnati offense. They use a lot of different uh, personnel, a lot of different formations. It takes some time for the players to get on the field. Look, when you've got a multiple offense like this, and it looks like Jeff Blake is having trouble with his helmet and not hearing the calls from uh, Ken Anderson on the sideline who gets the signals from Bruce Coslett, the offensive coordinator, and that slows things down, too. Again, he's only got five seconds left on the 30-second clock. Second penalty against the Bengals. They get this play off. Gets a pitch to Bienemy. Eric Bienemy carrying a tackler with him. Look at that. J.B. Brown along for the ride as Eric Bienemy, only 5'7, but about 200 pounds, carrying him on his back. Again, good blocking up front, but they decide to go outside. 61 Tootin, the offensive lineman, is is kind of giving the Cincinnati an unbalanced line and, and here's that ride you're talking about Tom. All right I'm cowboy the enemy took him 15 yards. Actually, he was a buffalo. <laughs> Good point. He ran like one there and it's close enough. I don't know why they're measuring. I thought he had uh, 15 yards. Let's see. I guess not. He had about uh, nine and three quarters. And as they uh, mark the football here, it's going to be second and very, very short. And I mentioned that it appeared that Jeff Blake was having trouble with the communications with his helmet. They've got those little receivers in the helmet. And he's saying he can't hear it. Yeah, sometimes they just get. AM and the coaches on FM. What can I tell you? <laughs> There's Anderson with the sunglasses. He was getting talk radio instead of Kenny, huh? That's what it was. Second down, 14th play of the Cincinnati Drive. Green. First down. Inside the five to about the three yard line. Brian Cox, Troy Vincent. But Harold Green with a tough run for Cincinnati. Uh, this is an excellent job here by this uh, the M&M &M boys. The much maligned offensive line. There's Oliver Dottie, the uh, defensive coordinator. You would like to make, as a defensive coordinator, you would like to make the offense just one-dimensional. The Bengals have been able to run and throw. And it's kind of put the Dolphin defense back on their heels a little bit here. First and goal from the three. Bengals getting to take the lead. Green picking his way. No, a pass to Pickens. He faked me out. Bruce Cosler put such a premium on ball faking. I thought they had given it to Harold Green. Instead, Pickens all alone at the back of the end zone. Yeah, the fact that they faked you out is inconsequential in this game. <laughs> but it also fooled the Miami Dolphins, Mr. Hammond. Thank you. Doug Pelfrey's extra point is good. So the Cincinnati Bengals put together a beautiful drive. Here's Blake's pass to Pickens for the clincher. And Cincinnati's up 7-3. I got a 1985 Saab 900 Turbo. It's got 147,000 miles. I've had it for nine and a half years. I've done its maintenance. I use Pennzoil every 3,000 miles religiously. Now with a revolutionary Pennstar molecule, Pennzoil clings to moving parts. Works like liquid ball bearings. Using Pennzoil every 3,000 miles, it'll keep me right up to par. Engine problems? Before you try a tune-up, try gum out first. The solution could be less than $5. When Dave Thomas created Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich, he used a whole breast fillet seasoned with his own blend of pepper and spices, but did he go too far? Very spicy. Wimp. It's perfect. Depends on who you ask. Try Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. One of these hammers is jacketed in high-impact polycarbonate. The other one is broken. The fiberglass jacketed hammer from Stanley. 
if you're ever in the hot sun of Pismo Beach, California, and you happen to forget your sunglasses, it's good to know that Mike Wood stocks more than a thousand pair, none alike, and none more than ten dollars. You can always use some extra cash when you travel, which is why so many people are renting their cars from Alamo. So if you want a great deal on a rental car, just ask Alamo. You could have enough left over to be real cool, even when it's hot. On that score, here's the touchdown pattern. Watch the play action fake and the effect it has on these three people. Jeff Blake does this beautifully. The people down inside are totally sold it's a run. There is no one in the middle of the end zone. An easy score for Carl Pickens and Cincinnati. Beautifully executed. And there's the mentor, Kenny Anderson. Blake says that uh, Kenny never lets up on him. He can have a, a near perfect game, and Kenny will find something. And David Shula joining the conversation. Kenny Anderson, of course, a great Cincinnati quarterback. Lee Johnson's kick, fielded by Irving Spikes. Spikes sort of picking his way forward tentatively and is stopped at about the 21 yard line by Eric Bieniemy. Big play for the Bengals. They lead it 7 3. Testing the new auto stick system on the Eagle Vision is test pilot Captain Orlowski. You uh, comfortable, sir? I love the smell of a new car in the morning. I'll take that as a yes. Gauging auto stick. No clutch, easy to shift. No bulky oxygen masks. Amazing control, even without the wings. <laughs> you don't get out of the F-16 much, do you, Flyboy? And that's okay. Test it yourself. Make the call. 1-800-2-TEST-EAGLE. Are you lost in a financial jungle? What you need is someone who knows the ropes. Someone you can count on for advice and financial information. MetLife can help you tame the risks and help you make sense of it all. Get Met. It pays. Geez, I gotta get to a hardware store. Building something? Sink's leaking. Sink's leaking? Talk to Bernie. Bernie? Bernie knows plumbing. Where does Bernie go? True Value. True Value. Official hardware store of the NFL. Official? Official. True Value, the official hardware store of the NFL. Yes, it's official. Get easy color interior paint for only $8.88 in this Bowen kitchen faucet for just $49.88. Monday, the Fresh Prince has a new job, and you won't believe what it is. I'm Hillary's here, Justin Deontay. Ah! Followed by an all-new In the House, NBC Monday. Bengals take 15 plays to go 87 yards of the 87, 48 of those on the ground. Uh, that's impressive. Again, to repeat, Dolphins defense to this point in the season allowing 62-7 a game. So the M&M &M boys get big M and M's. <laughs> Turn him over and well done. Yes. So the Dolphins will try to answer. Hand off to Spikes. Irving Spikes powered in the backfield and ridden down by James Francis. Tom, I'll make this comment about this defensive front for the Bengals as Artie Smith comes out. They're basically playing with four defensive tackles. They don't really have any defensive ends. I mean, if you look at the size of the up front four that they have, any coach in the land will tell you this is four defensive tackles. Artie Smith out of the game now with Andre Collins, another linebacker, in second and 15. Marino from the gun. delivers it to Eric Green who turned around and made the catch with James Francis all over him. There's big Eric Green making his eighth reception of the season. Now again th this is what this young man will bring to you. Big big body. He's got linebacker coverage James Francis and Green just runs the seam route up the field. James Francis just a second slow and if you're just a second slow with Dan Marino it's a completion of his. Yeah. yeah. 17 yards. Green telling us he'd like to catch more passes, but the way the Dolphins are winning, he can't complain. 
first down. Marino, plenty of time. And another reception. Kirby, flag down. Kirby makes it to the sideline. With a cut back inside the Cincinnati 20. Banged down by Darrell Williams, but there is a flag back upfield. And against Cincinnati, so the play will stay. Contact, number 24 defense. That penalty will be declined. First down. Tom, again, when you've got a receiver out of the backfield, here's Kirby, excellent receiver. They don't have to make a substitution, and the Bengals are forced to put a linebacker on him. He makes an excellent adjustment. Again, it's Steve Tovar, middle linebacker. And Kirby, such a gifted athlete. And ball does come loose here, but he's ruled down by contact, so no fumble. First down, Miami. 46 yards for the former Virginia Cavalier. Bernie Conley replaces him now in the backfield. Another pass from Marino. Another flag is down, and the ball batted away at the last second. Defensive play made by Leonard Wheeler as Irving Fryer was in the end zone. Offside against the Bengals. Get back, says the yeah. <laughs> Number 56 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards, first down. Rico McDonald lined up in the neutral zone. Yeah, what you don't want to do is give Dan Marino, here's 56. He's in the neutral zone, and the officials are calling that a little closer this year. You sure don't want to give this offense and Dan Marino any more chances than you absolutely have to. And a free play here, first and five now. Uh, it's, you, you want to cut his chances down as best you can. Formation in the backfield. Byers the fullback. Parmalee is the tailback. Parmalee ran right over Gracie Walker, who did manage to get into the turf. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York now for an update. Greg? All right, time in Atlanta. Let's bring you up to date on the Patriots and the Falcons. Scott Zolak for the injured Drew Bledsoe. This is a connection with Vincent Brisby. Good for 71 yards. It set up Curtis Martin for the one-yard touchdown. The Falcons have added a field goal, but right now the Patriots are in the lead. 7-6, second quarter. Tom and Bob, back to you. All right, Greg, thanks. And it's 7-3 here. The Bengals clinging to a tenuous lead as the Dolphins are at the eight-yard line with a first down. Rifle to the end zone. Green for the touchdown. Green beat Bracey Walker for his first score of the season. I don't know how you stop him in this situation. Here he is right over here. I don't know how you stop him. That's 286 pounds. Marino just absolutely puts it right in the right spot. There's so much body. Walker can't reach around. That'll help that red zone scoring for the Dolphins. Getting him involved. Stoyanovich the extra point. And it's good. So Miami rides the arm of Dan Marino down the field to recapture the lead. When it's gotta be now, and it's gotta be right, when it's gotta taste great to the very last bite, Domino's Ultimate Deep Dish Pizza. Thick, zesty with cheese melted to the edge. Buy any Ultimate Deep Dish Pizza at menu price and get an order of buffalo wings for $1.99. When you want it right away, it's zesty, fresh, and on the way.
The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Jeep, maker of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. By Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drink in Bush Light. By Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings. And by BASF, we don't make a lot of products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. With producer Bill Bunnell and director Larry Cavallina, Tom Hammond, Bob Trumpy from Riverfront Stadium, where Dan Marino drives the Dolphins back down the field to go up 10-7. Stoyanovic with the kickoff. David Dunn has a beat on it and takes it at the goal line. Lowers his head to the 22-yard line, tackled by Dwayne Dotson. Tom, if we go back to the touchdown reception by Eric Green, you're going to see how the Bengals are put in a real spot. You're going to have a release by Byers here, and these two guys have these two guys. Now, Green gets a free release off the line of scrimmage, and that puts Bracey Walker, the safety, in a no-win situation. I mean, if you don't hold up the tight end in these situations, certainly down in the scoring zone, you have no chance. The safety has no chance. And again, Marino just puts it in the right spot. I mean, it, somehow you have to hold this guy up at the line of scrimmage to slow him down. Penalty against the uh, Bengals on the kickoff. The illegal block will set it back as you look at Green after his first touchdown catch of the season. Marino has hit 8 of 13, has found six different receivers so far. First down Cincinnati at their own 11. Blake crossing to McGee. The tight end breaks free from one man and carries another to the 35-yard line. Troy Vincent finally got him to the turf as Blake on first down finds his tight end McGee. That's his 21st catch. He's caught the ball very well. He also dropped it, uh, fumbled it. They come with a blitz, the Dolphins do. It's picked up reasonably well. And there's no linebacker coverage underneath there. Stewart tries to uh, get over and help, but an excellent block by Darnay Scott, number 86. And it results in a pretty good gain for uh, the Bengals. 24 yards to be exact, as you see the numbers for Tony McGee. Tops among all tight ends in the NFL in yardage gain. Six and a half to play first half. Here's Harold Green. Uh, this Bengal running game gaining just a little bit of confidence here, Tom. Playing a big part in the Bengals' touchdown drive, their last possession. Jeff Blake has hit six of his ten passes, and four of the six have been to Carl Pickens. Procedure against Cincinnati. Or offside against Miami. Let's see. Play action draw or what is that? Offside, number 95, defense. Five yards, first down. Third offside call against Tim Bowens. Well, they call it on 95, but it's actually on cling by on 99, the, the tilted nose tackle there. He was a, a little bit out of his stance. It's that spot that Joe Green played when he was with Pittsburgh and kind of adopted that tilted tackle style since Joe Green became an assistant coach with the Miami Dolphins. The penalty gives Cincinnati a first down. At the Bengal 46. On the reverse, David Dunn to pass. He lobs it for Pickens. Who goes up and has it knocked away, but an interference call will be upcoming. J.B. Brown will be called for interference. It was actually Darnay Scott. And the interference call. This kid has a quarterback arm. He didn't throw that one particularly well. Ball was like a blimp. You know, it just did <laughs> it not wasn't as fast as a blimp. <laughs> on the reverse, he doesn't really get a good grip on it. Has an excellent arm. And the re you 
see Scott has to wait for it now. The complaint would be that the, the defender is looking back, J.B. Brown. Uh, but there's no question. Him, yeah. yeah, no question that there is interference there. Second big interference penalty against Miami, the sixth overall for 69 yards. Hand off to Green. Fights his way inside the 10 yard line. Jeff Cross and Chris Singleton get him down. As well as Miami had played defensively, this has to concern the defensive coordinator, Tom Olivetti. He was worried about their skill position athletes. He said they've got talent here. And there's just enough trickery that just the defense is not sure what's coming next. Melvin Tootin is in at a tight end on the left side, top of the screen. Another, this is Bianami throwing it out of the end zone. Eric Bianami with a halfback pass. They're pulling out all the tricks. Darnay Scott again was the intended receiver, but Bianami threw it away. I'll give him credit for throwing it away. I think he threw it away. I'm not sure he knew where he was throwing it. Uh, he did get it out there where. No one could catch it, and that's the good choice. I mean, yeah. you know, if you don't have a clear open receiver, make sure it's not intercepted. But, well, Brucey, Bruce Kaiser, the offensive coordinator, went back to that bucket a little yeah. too soon, maybe. Well, maybe, yeah, a little too fresh in the minds of the Dolphin defenders. Third down, trips to the left side of the formation. Blake's pass is dropped by Harold Green. That's a tough catch to make. Blake was under pressure and the pass as you say was tough low and behind Harold Green so on fourth down Doug Pelfrey is on to attempt a field goal yeah, when you're running full speed away from this and you got to reach down and try to catch it that's probably the most difficult catch there is to make but some make them Green not a particularly good receiver but and only five receptions coming into the game you see the numbers for Doug Pelfrey. And he got it. 28 yard field goal by Doug Pelfrey. And the Dolphins and Bengals are tied at 10. At BASF, we don't make the mattress, we make it softer. We don't make the boots, we make them drier. We don't make the house, we make it livelier. We don't make the snowboard, we make it stronger. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Even though the new Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited is more sophisticated, more refined, and more luxurious than ever. You can be sure that underneath it all, it's still a Jeep. Coming up next on the NFL on NBC, a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. Last season, the San Diego Chargers stymied the Steelers in a thriller on their way to the Super Bowl. Now, Pittsburgh seeks revenge. Original action, the NFL on NBC, next. Made in America, played in America. But to give you an idea just how long it's been since the Bengals beat Miami, look at this bit of trickery from Cincinnati. Back to Kenny Anderson, who lost it in the end zone, number 84, Bob Trumpy. The game-winning touchdown, the last Cincinnati win, 1977. The, uh, the dance needs work. I know, I know. <laughs> but I want to remind you, that was 1977, not 1877, <laughs> and I did have a face mask. I was shocked to see that they had uh, face masks and uh, not the old leather helmets. Shula never fails to remind me of that play. Although he constantly forgets what end zone is in, he's still in a rainstorm, all that trickery. Well, he's seen it again today from his son. I didn't realize that you were the man that started the uh, touchdown dances. <laughs> That was more of a waltz, wasn't it? And early one. Johnson's kick to Irving Spikes. Another short kick. And Spikes with a head of steam. Finally tracked down at the 35 or 36 yard line. Well, tonight we urge you to stay tuned for In the Line of Duty. Based on a true story, 
Starring NYPD Blues Nicholas Turturro and Adam Arkin in the line of duty world premiere tonight coming your way at nine o'clock eight central time here on NBC. Are you surprised this is 10 10. Yeah a bit surprised although the way Jeff Flake and his receivers have been operating I thought they might be able to score some points even though Miami's defense has been awfully good but they also haven't shown much sign of being able to stop Marino. Kirby squirms across the 40 a gain of about five Artie Smith the tackle last time they almost uh, forgot about the run relying exclusively on the pass from Marino and they just march right down the field and you see Terry Kirby go to the sideline and Bernie Parmalee comes in I mean this is a deep bunch let's see what is his shoelace just untied looks like he lost his shoe yeah. um, saw the other scores. Up and driven back by Steve Tovar. Uh, one thing I think the Bengals defense is going to be able to do is uh, Terry Kirby gets his uh, shoe problem attended to. One thing the Bengals defense should be able to do all season is stop the run. And uh, you've got four defensive linemen in there who are 300 plus pounds, three linebackers at 250 or better. The front seven of this defense is a solid unit. Calling for some crowd support. Receiver formation pressure on Marino juggling attempt incomplete off Carmelo's hands. It was Todd Kelly that put the pressure on Dan Marino, with Andre Collins defending Bernie Carmelo out of the backfield. And see 98 right here at the bottom of the screen gets around Richmond Webb, a good quick pass rusher. Really makes Dan Marino throw it a little quick, although there was excellent coverage on Parmley. Again. Just like Harold Green for Cincinnati, probably not a particularly good receiver. So John Kidd is on for his first punt of the day. Eric Bieniemy calls for a fair catch and then gets away from it. Oh. Not a good choice. It'll be downed at the seven-yard line. So the Bengals in a hole when we return to Riverfront with three minutes remaining in the first half. Adventurous nature lover seeks outdoor type for getaway weekends. Must like camping and hiking, interest in kayaking, a plus. Ownership of Jeep Cherokee, a definite plus. Social climbing highbrows need not apply. P.S. Please send a picture of Jeep Cherokee. About to meet Freddy Fast. Oh, thanks, <laughs> guys. Yeah, you do, man. Hey, guys, what's in the bag? McDonald's juicy quarter pounder with cheese. Two for two bucks, Mr. Half Size Halfback. Hey, I'll trade your autograph for them. Oh, hey, Mr. Rushmeister. I'll trade your autograph football. Ah, uh, it's not gonna happen here, Rocket Toast. Season tickets. Got, Got him. him. Skybox? <laughs> Now you can convert two bucks into two hot, tempting quarter pounders with cheese or two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg. But the clock's ticking, so hurry. And this just in. Superstar running back Barry Sanders is involved in some kind of major trade. Have you had your today? on an all-new brotherly love, Matt does Shakespeare. You're playing a fairy? Not just any fairy, king of the fairies. You're gonna be beating the chicks away with a wand. And Joe becomes a model student. All-new brotherly love, NBC tonight. Tie game with three minutes left in the half. Carl Pickens with a touchdown catch earlier, putting him in some pretty elite company. That's 10 games in a row. Yeah, there's a Hall of Famer. That's a lot for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Buddy Dial is not, but that is a nice group to be included with, Tom Hammond. Carl Pickens, 10 straight games with a touchdown reception. He's been the favorite target of Jeff Blake. Three minutes left, though, and the Bengals back at their own eight yard line after the punt was down there. Jeff Blake, the maestro. Oh, there's the uh, million dollar man, Kajana Carter. You know, the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and their fans just seemed to deflate when he was injured in the preseason, number one choice in the draft, but they surprised everybody with two wins. Going long, 
Donnie Scott can't get there. Tom, you're right about the back when Kajana Carter got hurt. It, it took a lot of wind out of the sails. But David Jula's point is, look, we've never had Kajana Carter. We don't know what he would do for us. He's legit. I mean, the numbers he put up for Penn State last year were extraordinary. The Bengals have hired an extra trainer. They have put on, bought some more weight training equipment just so that he has a personal trainer to uh, get his leg back in shape for next season. Although, I think it's going to be two years before he can really contribute. That kind of injury, that's often the case. Three wide receiver formation. Blake again will go to the air. Zips it a little high and off the hand of Jeff Hill. Let's get another update now on the Falcons and Patriots from New York. Greg Gumbel. Two, one. All right, Tom, thank you. In Atlanta, Ironhead Hayward on the draw from second and goal, pulls his way into the end zone. The two-point conversion clicked for the Falcons, and as they approach halftime in Atlanta, the Falcons lead New England 14-7. Tom? All right, Greg, and here a bit of a surprise. Jeff Blake and the Bengals tied with the Dolphins at 10. Facing a third down here deep in his own territory. Blake crossing pattern to Green, but only to the 10 yard line where he's dropped by Brian Cox. And that was a great tackle by Brian Cox. That was extraordinary. His shoe came off <laughs> trying to make the tackle. I I'm telling you, the receiver was almost by him when Brian Cox makes this tackle. Watch this. He sticks his arm out. Comes right out of his shoe and drops him in his tracks. That is a that's an impressive play by Brian Cox. And he's the heart and soul of this Miami defense. He said he's the two faced man. In fact he has a tattoo that says uh, Jekyll and Hyde. A wild man self professed when he gets onto the field. Don't forget this is the first game of a double header on NBC today coming up. In the second game, most of you will see a rematch of the AFC Championship game of a year ago as San Diego visits Pittsburgh, or you could see some of the other regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Second game of the doubleheader coming up next here on NBC. Tom, a point about uh, Brian Cox. This is his first full year at middle linebacker. Last year went through training camp as an outside linebacker, then in the second game took over at middle linebacker. Uh, he kind of learned on the fly last year during the season went through the training camp this year feels much more comfortable now at, at middle linebacker. Jeff Blake unable to pick up a first down on that drive and Lee Johnson will have to punt from his own end zone. has two and a half minutes after Johnson's punt. Let's go behind the stats now to take a look at Dan Marino and the offensive line that gives him protection. Boy, have they done the job for him. It's been a, an amazing group, but look at that. That's per season for his career, just 16 and a half sacks. Joe Montana, one of the best, 26.1. When you can protect Dan Marino, he'll kill you. And of course, his quick release has something to do with that. And not only his physical quick release, but his quick decision making. Like right there, finding the open man, Gary Clark, immediately in the center of the defense. Chris Schelling covers him, but that was Dan Marino at his best. Yeah, Marino senses pressure, sees the field. The two things you can't coach in a quarterback. to his knees to make the catch again of about five yards shelling again the tackle as we come to the two minute warning Marino driving the Dolphins again two minute warning tied the injured Pittsburgh Steeler he'll talk about the second game most of you will see Pittsburgh and San Diego and uh, we'll also hear from Will McDonough at halftime 
The Bengals have had a bit of a roar here in the first half, tied with Miami at 10, but Dan Marino always dangerous in this situation. Yes, uh, they've got two timeouts left, and this is one of the best parts of the Miami Dolphins offense. They have good receivers out of the backfield. They've had some luck with their four wide receiver set, and I see Randall Hill 89, Clark 84. Let's see who the other receivers are as they break the huddle. Looks to me like they have four. I see Fire, Fire and Duffy. Yeah, so four wide receivers, and this puts the Bengals in the Six defensive back set, which is not what they do well. Reno with plenty of time out of the backfield to Kirby. He'll have enough for the Miami first down. Darrell Williams, the tackle. Uh, he knows this. He knows this front and back. Exactly what he wants to do in this hurry up situation. In time. Scrambling for a little relief and throwing it away. Rico McDonald was bearing down on Marino, forcing him to throw it out of bounds. Yeah, we know about Dan Marino's ankle problem. When he plays, you can see the brace on his right ankle. When he plays, he doesn't seem to limp much, but when he walks on and off the field, to and from the huddle, back to the huddle, he has no strength in his right calf, can't get up on his toes. And uh, several doctor, doctors recommended an additional. A surgery, but they said we have no guarantees to the outcome. So he said, "To heck with it. I'll keep wearing the ankle brace. I'm doing fine." He said, "Didn't affect his passing much, like you said, not able to get up on his toes." But he said he often threw off his back foot anyway, and not a great hindrance. And going for the end zone and fire, incomplete. Leonard Wheeler knocked it away. Good coverage. Pryor gave him a good move. And the defensive back top of the screen, you're going to see the, the, the little hesitation move by Fryer. Wheeler didn't bite. He got stung the first time on the completion to Randall Hill. He learned. And he's back there for the coverage. Wheeler in his fourth year from Troy State made the play there on fire. And a third down for Miami. They've converted half of them, two of four, and Wheeler ready for another onslaught. South Marino. And he finally got a man. They tripped him up. Irving Fryer tripped up by Chris Schelling, and the game will be only about five. There's a penalty marker down in it. But it was picked up. Timeout. Cincinnati. That's their first charged timeout. 40 second timeout. Tom, it looked like they picked up the flag, but look at the protection that the offensive line allows them. I think uh, everybody thought that the play was over because somebody was offside, but look at this. They just stay on the line of scrimmage. There's only three rushing because another one dropped. The offensive linemen are looking for somebody to block. So the Bengals had eight back in coverage, three rushing. You can call that a rush. <laughs> and... Uh... David Shula taking the timeout with 106 left. Bernie Kozar over on the sideline there as Marino checks in for a little discussion. Uh, let me ask you a question. Why would they take a timeout? I, I didn't understand either unless they're trying to preserve some time conceding a field goal here. Okay. Stoyanovic hit a 21 yard field goal earlier. This one will be. From 30, from 46 yards. Stojanovic to give the Dolphins the lead. And he got it. Pete Stojanovic, 46 yards, puts Daddy back in front at 13 10. So the Bengals with the timeout did save some time. 101 left until halftime. And the Bengals with two timeouts remaining. Uh, is it fair to say at this point that the Dolphins have looked flat? Yeah, a bit. That uh, sometimes the bye week in the NFL hurts more than helps. When you've got injuries and the bye week comes late in the season, I think you perform better after that 10 day wait or 9 day wait in the case of the Miami Dolphins. But the Dolphins just don't look sharp here. I mean, Marino had all kinds of time no receiver open on that last pass reception. They're just not. 
there's not the intensity that we saw I think previous the time when they played the Pittsburgh Steelers and probably not too excited about playing the Cincinnati Bengals though they are two and two their reputation is not that great and of the Shula clan only one of them rule uh, roots for daddy his wife Mary Ann his second wife who is uh, here watching the game all the siblings are rooting for daddy and David Shula said that they have to stick together when it comes to competing against Papa uh, Don said he and Mary Ann have Eight kids between them and eight grandkids between them. Yesterday uh, during the Dolphins practice, David Shula's three sons were out here running plays with Mike Shula. Oyanovich with the kick. David Dunn from the goal line. Dunn smacked down at the 24 yard line by Dwayne Dotson, another good special teams tackle. As a matter of fact, you mentioned Don Shula. Grandsons were out. Dave's three boys were out catching passes from Uncle Mike, the assistant coach of the uh, Chicago Bears. And Shula was standing there talking to us, <laughs> but he was more interested in evaluating the, the talent of the three grandsons. I mean, we couldn't get his attention. He, look at that move. Oh, nice hands. Oh, look at the feet on that kid. Oh, this kid's a great athlete. So he, <laughs> he never stops evaluating. David Shula had a party of about 40, mostly family members and friends at his house yesterday afternoon where. Granddad got to spend a lot of time. Blake steps out, delivers oh. through the arms of Darnay Scott. Goodness. A rare miss by Don Eric, Don Eric, Darnay Scott. The uh, Cincinnati Bengals, a surprising 2-2. Two two. Many predictions that they would be 0-4 at this point, and they've actually had a chance to win all four games. And they need to have a good season, really, with Mike Brown and his stadium referendum set for a vote in March, hoping for the city to keep an increase in the sales tax and build a new stadium for the Bengals and the Reds. Blake got rid of it with a man hanging on to him. James Joseph makes the catch, and then Trace Armstrong takes him down after a five-yard game. Now Blake now trying to get his team to the line of scrimmage. He's got receivers way down the field. Third down, you see the clock inside 30 seconds. Lakes pass wide of Tony McGee and incomplete. Penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. And a hold against Cincinnati. Holding number 64 offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Bruce Kazerski in his 12th season he was telling us he had a beard and it had a little gray flex in it when it came contract negotiation time he shaved it off he didn't want to remind anybody how old he yeah, was that, that that's pretty obvious you got to do that nowadays in the NFL they're always looking for someone younger Lee Johnson to boot it away. Jay McDuffie from the 29. Diff armed one man out of the way and got another yard or two. So 13 seconds left. Kevin Jefferson, the special team stop of McDuffie. Um, I think I see a flag on the field on the far side of the field. Face mask against Miami. We have a 15 yard face mask foul against the receivers while the ball was in the air. The penalty will be taken from the spot where the ball was caught. And with 13 seconds remaining that may just uh, be a signal to kill the first half. Yeah, I, I think uh, Don would like to get in there and uh, talk to his team. This uh, this bye week is uh, they come out at least in the first half and, and look average at best. I'm not saying that you know, the, the Bengals are are a bad team and they've done some good things in this first half but the, the Dolphins it, it's just not there's no rhythm yet. So just 13 ticks remaining and the ball spotted way back at the Miami 17 yard line. And don't forget the uh, Domino's Pizza halftime report. Coming up next here on the NFL on NBC.
Because remember, Marino had that fake downing the ball against the Jets that scored a touchdown, but no fake here. He takes a knee to bring the first half to a close. Well, son has given dad a battle here in the first half, surprising many folks around the country. Papa does have the lead, but it's been tough for the Dolphins in the first half. 13-10 Miami. Now for the Domino's Pizza halftime report, let's go to Greg Gumbel. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. When it's got to be great and it's got to be now, it's got to be, got to be Domino's. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Mike Ditka and Joe Gibbs. And let's run down scores and highlights for you as we have them now. Beginning with the game in Cincinnati and the Miami Dolphins ahead of the Bengals at the break by a field goal. 13-10 the score there. Dave Shula 0-5 as an assistant or a head coach against his dad. Dan Marino hooking up here with Randall Hill. Hill's first reception of the season. That's a 58-yard gain to the Bengal 18. It set up Pete Stoyanovich for a field goal and a 3-0 Miami lead. Miami driving in the first. Marino to Gary Clark, hit by Roger Jones. And Andre Collins makes the interception at the 12-yard line. The Bengals capitalize off the turnover. Jeff Blake on the play action to Carl Pickens for the TD. It was 7-3 Cincy. But here comes Dan Marino. He finds Eric Green between defenders for an 8-yard scoring strike to make it 10-7. Take a look at the quarterback battle today. Dan Marino, 219 yards and a touchdown. Jeff Blake, 70 yards and one touchdown. We talked prior to this game about emotion. Joe and emotion has played a part so far well I think it has I think the other thing has played a part it looks like Miami's going back to their old game plan all Marino they, he's got 20 attempts here only 11 attempts rushing that's kind of going away from what got him you know 3-0 and undefeated and Mike we talked about the Bengals in the pregame show the Bengals are tough they hang in well and the whole key we said if they could play defense with them they're going to be in there because Blake and his offense will score some points they're doing a good job all right Mike in uh, RFK Stadium in Washington take a look at this score at halftime the Redskins lead the Dallas Cowboys by a score of 20 to 10 Cowboy quarterback Troy Aikman out of this game with a strained calf muscle and the Redskins are playing inspired football they lead it by 10 at the break in Indianapolis the unbeaten Rams trail the Colts 14 to 10 in this game, Joe. Uh, the Rams did something they haven't done all season. They committed a turnover. Well, they are totally out of their game plan here. When you think about this, they've had five attempted rushes for six yards. So they've been rushing the football. They've been stopping the rush. They haven't stopped it here. They've had one turnover, and that led to a touchdown. So they're away from their game plan also. And you saw Marshall Falk's numbers in this game. It's his first 100-yard game this season. Eight carries for 123 yards so far. The Colts lead the Rams by four. In Atlanta, the Falcons hosting the New England Patriots and leading New England. 17 to 7 as they head toward the break. Injured quarterback Drew Bledsoe replaced by Scott Zolak for the Patriots. Jeff George with a hot hand early on, 13 of 13, including this completion to Terrence Mathis, who fumbled. But J.J. Burton recovered for Atlanta. It led to a Morton Anderson field goal and a 3-0 Falcons lead. Zolak, third and four to Vincent Brisby over the middle, who goes 71 yards before being tackled at the two-yard line. And three plays later, rookie Curtis Martin went over the top, a one-yard plunge, second touchdown of the season for Martin and for the Patriots, 7-3 New England. But then watch Craig Ironhead Hayward on the draw play from nine yards out for the touchdown. George to Terrence Mathis for the two-point conversion made it 14-7 in favor of the Falcons. And it is now a 17 to 7 score. The one thing that Jeff George is proving once again is the Patriots cannot defend against the pass. Well, that's one thing they can do, but it's a 17 to 14 score right now. I'm not giving up on those Patriots because they got a lot of heart. Bill Parcells <laughs> coach them. They'll be back. All right, Mike. In Carolina, Tampa Bay and the Panthers, 13 to 7. Bucks are leading it at halftime. In New Orleans, the Eagles and the Saints have gone to the break with the Eagles leading at 6 to 3. And one baseball score to report to you, the New York Yankees have a 4 nothing lead on the Toronto Blue Jays. A Yankee victory or a California loss to Oakland today puts the Yankees into the postseason as a wild card. When we return, we'll hear from Rod Woodson of the Steelers and check in with Will McDonough for some NFL news and notes. And we'll get to that right after this from your local station. They masterminded the most brutal crime spree on record and eluded the FBI for seven years. You can't turn up the heat on what you can't find. Based on a true story, the most massive manhunt in U.S. history. They're so close, I felt like I could reach out and grab them. 1,000 agents, one brilliant gang, 
one tantalizing clue. This is your worst nightmare come true. Let's go for it, everybody. Move in now. NYPD Blues, Nicholas Torturo, Adam Arkin, in the line of duty, NBC Tonight. Now that you've given her away, you'll always cherish the memories. You'll always remember the joy. And you'll never forget the bill. $220 for parsley? But hey, isn't that why you got Visa Gold in the first place? With all the purchase power to handle any occasion. Even the most precious. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Saturday, October 7th, TVN brings you the World Combat Championship. This premier event pits eight distinct fighting systems against one another. They'll all go head-to-head -head and one-on-one -on -one in a bare-knuckle battle to the finish. On Friday, October 13th, TVN will be featuring Rap Sheet's Free Expression in the 90s, a live three-hour concert with artists such as Cypress Hill and Wu-Tang Clan. TVN, where the future is now playing. This is NFL Sunday Ticket. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. When it's got to be great and it's got to be now, it's got to be, got to be Domino's. Welcome back, everyone. We'll hear from Rod Woodson in a moment. But first, we get a second helping of Will McDonough's news and notes. Let's go back to Will in Atlanta. Will. Thanks very much, Greg. The, the league trading deadline is only nine days away, and people are wondering what's going to happen to tight end Keith Jackson, who is now the property of the Green Bay Packers, and Patrick Bates, who is the property of the Raiders. Uh, Keith Jackson has not played a game since the playoff game last year against San Diego, where he had eight catches for over 100 yards. And his agent, Wishad, tells me he does not want to come back to football. He's going to retire off of that game, says he has plenty of money, and he's going to be happy. Of course, this leaves Green Bay stuck for a second-round draft, draft choice, which they gave to Miami for the right to get Jackson. Bates, who lives in Dallas, is back there and would like to play for the Cowboys. However, my understanding is there's nothing being done in the way of a trade so far. And, of course, like we said, the deadline is still nine days away. Speaking of Dallas, Deion Sanders came in there Wednesday on a cane, threw it away Thursday, has already started jogging, and the Cowboy folks say he'll be ready to play before the month is over. Back to you, Greg. All right, Will, thank you. Joe, if this is a negotiating ploy by Keith Jackson, time's running out on him, isn't it? If he wants to play again, my experience has been, Greg, that players that sit out. I had Tony Peters and John Riggins that were at the top of their game set out and it was very tough for them coming back. As far as getting out of football with enough money, the only guy I know that did that was Mike Dicka. Well, I guess Keith doesn't realize it's not about the money, it's about the love. That's right, it's <laughs> not about money. The featured game of our doubleheader is San Diego at Pittsburgh. Unfortunately for the Steelers, they're playing without Rod Woodson, who tore a ligament in his knee back in week one and is out for at least the regular season. Ahmad Rashad spoke with Woodson. You know, they just, you know, swing pass out to Barry and and I came up to tackle him, and, it, and I felt my knee shift. It didn't hurt at all. I just felt it shift. I laid on the ground, and I, as I was laying on the ground, I was just saying, don't be my ACL. Don't be my ACL. Come on, get up. Just don't be my ACL. Stood up. I knew it was my ACL because my leg was shifting a little bit. Well, not only did you uh, look at the replay of the injury, you also, when you got the operation, you made sure that you were awake so you could watch them work on your knee. Well, you know, Dr. Stedman is a great doctor out in Vail, Colorado, uh, but I want to make sure he knew what he was doing, like I knew what he was doing, but <laughs> I want to see, really. I didn't want to see. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we were talking the whole time. I was a little out of it, but uh, you know, we were talking. He was telling me what was uh, going on. He took my patella tendon out. I told him I wanted to see it, and he showed me my patella tendon before he put it back in. And uh, it was interesting. Now, you also told uh, Bill Cower that to leave you on the active roster because you thought you might be able to come back? Um, you know, everybody that you talk to is saying, you know, you'd be crazy trying to come back this year. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, their opinion. You know, I, I'm a person, I'm, I'm an optimist. I like to go against the odds anyway. Um, you know, they didn't think I would have the range of motion. I already have my range of motion. It's been two weeks. And, I, you know, I can touch, almost touch my heel on uh, my buttocks already. If I'm ahead of my program, I don't know. It's only been two weeks. When you do accelerated rehab, it's anywhere between four to six months. You can come back, depending on the person. 
and four months is right at the end of December, beginning of January, right in the playoff. Uh, if we, you know, depending on if you win the division or whatever, uh, if you can be the wild card or get a week off, it'd be great if we got a week off and had home field advantage. You know, that'd be even better for me. Wouldn't it be better to just take the year off, strengthen that leg up, and come back next year? It probably would. It probably would, but I'm hard headed. So I'm, I'm going to try it. And, uh, but if, you know, if I go out there and, and once I start running it, you know, in three months and stuff of that nature, and it doesn't feel good, I wouldn't go out and play. I'm not that crazy. How tough is it watching every week? Uh, it's tough. Uh, you know, I'm at home the last two weeks and, you know, see the, seeing the guys play. And, uh, you know, especially the Monday night game, it's a big game, a national televised game. And, you know, and my wife made me a nice little snack. I couldn't even snack. I'm nervous, you know, and I'm, I'm shaking. Like, I'm on the football field still, you know, got the adrenaline going, everything. I want to play, but I can't because I'm on the couch. So, you know, I'm one of the uh, money-eating quarterbacks nowadays, sitting on the couch going, oh, come on, guys, why you do that? <laughs> Rod Woodson, as valuable a guy as he is, Mike, wouldn't you want him to take the whole year off and make sure that he's strong for next season? You know, I, I got to say what he said. I guess I'm a little crazy, too. I'd want him back if I could get him back because right now the Steelers need him very badly. First of all, they can't play those blitz defenses without him on the corner. Uh, he, he's just a good football player, but the Steelers better get their offense on track. If they don't get the offense on track, they won't have any reason to bring him back. And Joe, you miss a Rod Woodson in a lot of places, don't you? A lot of different ways. You miss him in man coverage, as Mike points out, because it changes their whole style of defense. I think you also miss him in the locker room from a leadership standpoint. And then I think another very important point, and, and something this guy really adds to the team, is, is the return man and special teams. You miss him there also. All right, gentlemen, no Rod Woodson, but the Steelers host the San Diego Chargers in the game most of you will see at 4 o'clock Eastern time. And our NFL on NBC halftime activities continue. Brotherly love, Joe becomes a model student. <laughs> then on minor adjustments, meet the master hacker. I thought internet was what you sprayed on your hair before final net. Then Paul and Jamie make the most important decision of their entire married life. It's a small step for a couple of Buckmans, but it's a huge leap for Buckman kind. And Hope sending sexy email to everyone. Why does it say message sent to global list? <laughs> All new Hope and Gloria, NBC tonight. On any given Sunday, there's over 5,000 hits, 2,000 head cracks, and 500 body slams. But the trouble is, it's not on the football field. Violence shouldn't be a part of real life. Think about it. You're watching NFL Sunday Ticket. Tuesday night, postseason baseball returns with a division series. The Reds battle the Dodgers. Plus, the Red Sox, the Braves, the Indians, the AL West winner, and the Wild Cards. Regional coverage at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific starts Tuesday night on NBC. 13-10 as we get ready to start the third quarter at Riverfront Stadium. Tom Hammond and Bob Trumpy with you from Cincinnati. Coors Light first half stats. Wow, pretty even numbers there. A the big difference. Uh, the passing yards for Miami just 70 for Cincinnati. The lone turnover on the fumble time of possession pretty even. Well, 13-10 score. It would certainly much indicate that the numbers should be even. David Shula has seen his team a battle on pretty even terms with the favorite Dolphins, although Marino did amass, as you saw on the stats, plenty of yards through the air. Stojanovic will kick off to get the second half underway. And Dunn from the end zone. David Dunn to the 21, maybe 22 yard line, returning it from the end zone, tackled by Sean Hill. You can see that the, twice they went three plays and out. The Bengals did. Good long drive here on that 15 play drive with the touchdown to Carl Pickens. They've run the ball with some success. And they kept this Dolphin defense back on their heels, not really figuring out exactly what's coming next. So 
Maybe that's something to build on. I have a feeling, though, that Don Shula may have uh, gotten up in the face of a lot of players on his Dolphin squad. This is not the kind of performance he expected. Ball spotted at the Cincinnati 21 to open the third quarter. Flags down as Harold Green gets the call. And it looked like the Dolphins were offside. Jeff Blake with a uh, change up in the cadence. And the Dolphins came across. And see that I think that's the fourth time that's happened. And again, offside, right defensive end. Five yards, first down. Tom, that's a lack of concentration. Maybe that 10-day. Uh, we think it's Marco Coleman. See if he jumps out of his stance. Well, there's two that jump out of right. his stance, but that's a lack of concentration there. You're, you should be watching and not listening as a defensive lineman. He's a big Joe Green. He could get off sides in a hurry. <laughs> well, how could you tell if you were on or off? How much space as he takes up. So it's first and five for Cincinnati. Blake rolls, delivers, and it's knocked away. Pickens, the intended receiver. And Gene Atkins is the man that knocks it down. Uh, Singleton getting up slowly. Broke his leg last year, and it looked like uh, Harold Green kind of fell on his ankle. This, this poor kid breaks his fibula last year, thinks he's fine, discovers in May that it didn't heal right. They have to re-break his leg and put uh, four screws and a plate in it, and he's back here playing. Played in four screws. Chris Singleton says he can sometimes tell the weather. Green hit in the backfield and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of a half yard. Penetration by Chuck Klingbile and Dwight Hollier. Well, watch Klingbile get across the line of scrimmage here. He's sitting right here again at that tilted nose tackle. Gets inside the center guard gap. And they're asking the tight end, Tony McGee, to wham on him. They call that a wham block. Oh, that's 240 block and 290. I, I always begged off on that job as a tight end. <laughs> Klingbeil takes the breather as they get the uh, nickel defense on, third and five. Blitz coming, Brian Cox. Put a little pressure on Blake, who swung it to Green, and a beautiful open field tackle by Troy Vincent. Vincent, whose wife Tommy gave birth to their second child, Troy Jr., this past Wednesday. He made the mistake, though, of not bringing the... Uh, <laughs> Forgot the cigars. The cigars. A major mistake on Troy. Man, you're right. That was a fine tackle there in open field. Fourth down, Lee Johnson ready to punt. So the Bengals sputter on their first possession of the third quarter. O.J. McDuffie awaiting the boot. High, but not too deep. McDuffie... Have an awkward catch at about the 30. Dodges two men and then is taken down at the 36-yard line by Andre Collins. Good field position for the Dolphins. Their first possession of the second half coming up. With the power of 210 horses, and the traction of all-wheel drive. It'll turn more than heads. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi. See your dealer for great lease offers on all Eclipses, including turbo models. Every time you make a long-distance call, AT&T sends out a signal to check the quality of the line automatically routing around trouble before you even finish dialing. Because in business, it all comes back to getting your calls through. Guaranteed network reliability at a competitive price. Linda, I'd like to bounce an idea off. Only from AT&T for the life of your business. Light, the silver bullet, it's shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. 
by Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Get it while it's hot. By AT&T, your true choice. And by Coors Light, shipped cold to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Coors Light, tap the Rockies. Back at Riverfront Stadium, first down, Dolphins at their own 36-yard line, leading by three. Marino whips it to the sideline. McDuffie, the catch, he's at midfield, ridden down there by Bracey Walker and Leonard Wheeler. Marino and the Dolphins bidding to go 4-0 to start this 95 season, but quick starts, not unusual for Miami. Yeah, the, the Buffalo start really helped them so much in those four straight uh, trips to the Super Bowl, and of course everybody said, well, you know, when you get Buffalo in the winter, it's a great advantage for Buffalo. Well, I think you get Miami in the winter when it's so hot and humid down there. It's a great advantage for the Dolphins, too. Again, Marino has plenty of time. All he needs is an off the hands of Eric Green. Hands of stone that time. Green was telling us he needs, and there's a flag down back up field. Green was telling us he needs some more reception to get back to Honolulu in the Pro Bowl where he's been the last two years. Uh, won't get him that way. Would have come back anyway. The penalty against Miami. Holding number 78 offense. Ten yards. First down. Richmond Webb the guilty party. Nicknamed Bam Bam. <laughs> Big old long arms. Pro Bowl offensive tackle. Starter from the day he showed up. He's on Artie Smith. He's got his hand uh, full of jersey there, the left hand. Uh, drags him out there, one of the best pass protectors in the league. Started since he showed up his right. In fact, his 65th consecutive today. Marino has fire. Irving fire. The catch inside the 45 of Cincinnati, covered by Andre Collins, and that's a mismatch. Yeah, uh, you can see Marino yelling at Irving. Didn't do exactly what he wanted him to do, but. The one thing about this offense is you watch the uh, su super slow motion delivery of Dan Marino on target to Irving Fryer. Nice catch. The one thing you have to give uh, Don Shula and his coaching staff credit for. They're great adjusters at halftime. Let's see what adjustments they make here to the defense that they saw in the first half. First running play for Miami. Terry Kirby didn't get much. Back to the line of scrimmage and dropped by Rico McDonald. Big collision coming up here. Ricardo McDonald, number 56, and Keith Byers. McDonald playing the defensive end. He sees the block coming, lowers his shoulder. That's Byers, 41. McDonald wins that one, stops him for a loss. Has a twin brother that went to uh, Notre Dame and now plays for the Indianapolis Colts, Devon McDonald. Here's third and four. Flag down. Marino has Kirby slipped one man and would have a first down if it stands. Two penalties down. Two markers down. Tovar made the tackle. Two penalties against Cincinnati. Offsides and Pass interference. We have two fouls against the defense, both which will be declined. Offside defense, illegal hands defense. They're both five yard penalties. They're both declined. First down. That's because the gain was eight yards by Terry Kirby on the pass from Marino. This is something that Miami does so well and, and they have for so many years. They started out doing it with Tony Nathan and they had Jim Jensen. It's that running back out of the backfield that forces the defense to put a linebacker on him. Only few teams can stop that. First down Miami at the 35. They lead 13-10. Early in the third quarter. Parmalee trying to get the corner. Being chased and finally bumped out of bounds. James Francis was bearing down on him, so was Bracey Walker. He managed to get four yards. Well, that was designed to go way out to the right. He has to come all the way back to the left. I'm telling you, this football game is like it's being played at a neutral site. Funny, isn't it? The crowd is just dead. Is it because uh, 
they don't expect Cincinnati to, to win or what is it? I, I don't know. I think they've seen so much losing here in the last couple of three years that they expect a lot. They're not getting much. Pitch it to Irving Spikes. Makes a cut up and shakes one man. Got away from another and has a Miami first down to the 24-yard line. Andre Collins finally stops. Irving Spikes in his second year out of Northeast Louisiana signed with the Dolphins as a free agent and their number three rusher coming into the game. Good block to lead the play there by O.J. McDuffie, number 81. The Dolphins require their wide receivers to do a, an awful lot of blocking. I think Don Shula got that when he first came to Miami and he had Paul Warfield. One of the best blockers down the field I think I've ever seen. He made a key uh, block there for Spikes to break a big game. Nice block. Nick Duffy. First down Miami. They continue to drive. Trying to add to the three-point lead. Spikes. Nowhere to go. Dropped for a loss by Ramondo Stallings. Well, he slipped. Just as uh, he starts. He kind of double clutches on one foot. You know, as it kind of hung out there to dry a little bit with the ball waiting for Spikes. Watch Spikes' foot. Lead block by, and it catches his toe, and he's just waiting there. Come on, come on, come and get it, come and get it. And by that time, several Bengals there to make the tackle. Spikes over on the sideline now. And his jersey tucked back in. Kirby is returned. Eighth play of the drive. Marino finds Green and Eric bangs his way to the seven yard line. Leonard Wheeler hanging on for dear life and Green has given Miami a first and goal. 286 pounds of tight end. Here is Green right over here. Runs the crossing route. Does he have linebacker coverage? Yes, it's Steve Tovar. Nice little move by Eric Green. That's a zone by uh, Miami. Does an excellent job. Lands on his shoulder, goes to the sideline. He hurt his shoulder in training camp. Missed two and a half weeks. He's being attended to on the sideline. And Ronnie Williams has taken his place. Kirby try to cut it back. Nothing doing. Artie Smith grabbed him. And Eric Green will return. Uh, said to us, I was kind of surprised. Everybody. Looked at his numbers with Pittsburgh. He makes the Pro Bowl catches a lot of passes, but he said he actually did more blocking in Pittsburgh than he does in Miami. So he's doing what they're asking him to do, was his comment to us. He was also telling us that the, the Miami coaches he doesn't think have realized the red zone is his zone. Wants him to use him more in this situation. Long Miami drive. Hand it to Kirby. Caught by Big Daddy Dan Wilkinson. No doubt celebrating the Buckeyes win over Notre Dame in Columbus yesterday. Thought about going to the game and said he couldn't handle that fine for missing last night's meeting. I think that's the first time we've called Wilkinson's number today. It is. Making that move to a defensive tackle. This is now the third different spot he's played. He started out at right defensive tackle. Began the season at the right defensive end. Now left defensive tackle. Larry Piccatello said he could be a good defensive end, but he thinks he could be a great defensive tackle. Marino from the gun on third down. And flags down. It'll be against Miami. More procedure. Offense prior to the snap. Five yards, third down. Richmond Webb. The tenth penalty against the Dolphins. Another sign that they are not up to their normal sharpness. Yeah, especially with uh, Don Shula as the head coach. I mean, he drive that drives Don Shula nuts. Here's Webb. He's trying to get that jump on that outside pass rusher, Todd Kelly. Get his hand up off the ground. And he anticipates wrong. Over 100 yards in penalties against the Dolphins. Now it's third and 11. Third and goal from the 11. That's his fifth of the season. In there quickly, too. Here's Copeland right here. 
He's slow getting off the ball, gets around Sims. Pro Bowl guard right in the chest of Dan Marino. Stojanovic will attempt a 36-yard field goal. He's hit already from 21 and 46. Pete Stojanovic knocks it through. Well, a victory of sorts for the Bengals. They hold Miami to a field goal. The lead is six. When you're Barry Sanders, one of the quickest men in the NFL, some days it seems like no one can touch you. No one can catch you. No one can even come close. Anyway, coming through. Man, I'm making these wishes. Sausage McMuffin with egg, four-minute milers coming through. Now you can convert $2 into two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg or two hot, tempting quarter pounders with cheese. But the clock's ticking, so hurry. Hey, look who's here. Hey, Louis Leslie. Slow mo gel. Very sandbag. Have you had your break today? There's one way to win the Napa 500, and then there's another. At Napa's Pick the Winner Sale, where you can register for a chance to win the Napa 500 Pace Car. While you're here, pick up some great parts and accessories at low prices, like Autolite spark plugs, just 49 cents, and Napa halogen headlights as low as $4.99. The Pick the Winner Sale, going on now at Napa. We keep America running. We keep America running. You and the Mitsubishi Galant. It's bound to be a positive relationship. After all, the Galant's dependable, good-looking, and it recognizes your need for space. Now's your last opportunity to lease a 95 Galant S for zero down and $249 a month for 36 months, and only Mitsubishi adds $500 cash back. Proof you'll also be financially compatible. But hurry, this could be your last chance at happiness. The Galant from Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. Monday, the Fresh Prince has a new job, and you won't believe what it is. I'm Hillary's here, Justin Deontay. Ah! Followed by an all-new In the House, NBC Monday. And Marino trying to find out what went wrong as the Dolphins move the ball down the field but have to settle for a field goal. Yeah, the, the possessions here, they get a field goal here, and they're inside the 30. They get a touchdown, that's in the end zone. Field goal here inside the 30. Inside the 30 there, so they're inside the 30 four times to get one touchdown and three field goals. Not quite the way the Miami Dolphins offense is functioning. Don Chula's going to have to get the Miami Wives out against those after those players, huh? <laughs> that one bounces in the end zone for the touchback. They're more special teamers, aren't they? <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, uh, Red Dog. Why? Do you ever wonder why we're here? Where? You know, here. Why we exist. No. How come? I got better things to think about. But why are we the way we are? I mean, I'd give anything to be as big as you. True. You ain't big. But you're real quick. <laughs> quick? Yeah. I guess it all evens out then, huh? Well, that might be pushing it. Red Dog. Hey, hey, Red Dog. Yeah? Full moon tomorrow night. I'm there, buddy. Bear Premium Plus Interior Paint is made with pure titanium dioxide for cleaner, brighter whites and exceptionally vivid colors. And at the Home Depot, our paint pros will gladly match Bear Premium Plus with anything, except, of course, a premium price. Bear Premium Plus, exclusively from the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Just the beginning. With up to 210 horsepower, it's got power to spare. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi. See your dealer for great lease offers on all Eclipses, including turbo models. Tom Hammond and Bob Trumpy, Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Shula Bowl 2, and David Shula's Bengals have uh, seen the Dolphins leave the door open. 16-10 is the score, and if David can get his offense cranked up, he can be right in it. In fact, we asked uh, David Shula if he should beat his dad. It's never happened, of course. If he should beat him, how would he handle that handshake at uh, midfield? He said, quickly. Quickly. <laughs> I, said, I said, have you thought about, do you jog across the field? Do you walk across? Do you do handstands across the field? I mean, that's a big decision for you to make, pal. He hopes to make it. 
Two tight ends, McGee and Ware on first down. Blake to the air and throws it away. Carl Pickens closest to it, but Blake just sailed it out of bounds. Yeah, trying to set up a screen to uh, Harold Green. And the defense was all over it. There's Marino on the sideline. If there is an inspirational leader on this team, and it has always been Dan Marino. He'll get in anybody's face. Shula's players. This guy burns. <laughs> Got in Greg Lloyd's face, didn't he, sure on did. Monday night. And he grabbed his jersey. I asked him, what did you say to him? He said, I had the wind knocked out of me. I couldn't say anything. I just grabbed his jersey. Pulling guard collided with Jack Blake as he rolled out. And he finally does find Carl Pickens. And makes the catch beyond the 30 for a first down. Another thing that Jeff Blake does very well, and that is roll out. And he does here. You see the offensive guard 62 Kalis kind of knocks Jeff Blake off stride, writes himself, and throws the ball well on the run. This is a talented young man. Making only a 700,000 plus, and he feels that uh, he deserves in the millions. So uh, his numbers would justify that. In fact, his agent talking to the Bengals about that very subject. Green, two or three tough yards. Dwight Collier at the bottom of the stack for Miami. Now Jeff Blake is a bargain. He, he's also a big secret, I think, in the NFL. Uh, making just his 14th start is Jeff Blake. I mean, that's understandable. He's up against a, a quarterback who uh, has been, had more primetime programs than any other quarterback in the recent memory. So he's trying not just attention for him but also for his team he's a kid who uh, does his work keeps his mouth shut very meticulous in his preparation quick pitch to the enemy made a nice cut up he has a blocker in front and the enemy all the way into miami territory to the 44 yard line kevin Sargent clearing a path for the enemy who was finally tracked down by coleman and hollier and tom this was very close to a fumble at the line of scrimmage watch what happens on this pitch it's going to be coming right at you. You got two and 61 out there. See, it almost slips out of his hands. He, he finally grabs the point of it, gets it tucked in, cuts <laughs> upside. There's Sergeant way out in front making the downfield block. Uh, you, that's not the way it was designed, but it certainly worked. And Eric the enemy for 22 yards. First down Cincinnati at the 45 of Miami. Dolphins lead by six. Blake going for Pickens. had joined the elite in the number of consecutive games with a touchdown reception. He is right there. Mitsubishi Motors presents Diamonds in the Rock. His career was spinning out of control as he was banged up with the bucks and crushed with the cards. Now he's gone from perennial punching bag to delivering the knockout punch. Who is this diamond in the rough? You and the Mitsubishi Galan. It's bound to be a positive relationship. After all, the Galant's dependable, good-looking, and it recognizes your need for space. Now's your last opportunity to lease a 95 Galant S for zero down and $249 a month for 36 months, and only Mitsubishi adds $500 cash back. Proof you'll also be financially compatible. But hurry, this could be your last chance at happiness. The Galant from Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. Chris Chandler has finally found a perfect fit with Houston, and in week four, he gave the Bengals fits, connecting on 23 of 26 passes for 352 yards and a career-high four touchdowns, making Chris Chandler a true diamond in the rough. Domino's presents Gus's Guide to the Game. The key to football is timing. Allow precisely 22 minutes for pregame warm-up. Then make the right call. <laughs> 
be starving at halftime. As some rookies lost with your pizza. Call for any ultimate deep dish at menu price. Thick and zesty, cheese melted to the edge, and get buffalo wings for $1.99. Delivered free. Oh, God! Right after the game, honey. But we're into OT. Coming up next on the NFL on NBC, a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. Last season, the San Diego Chargers stymied the Steelers in a thriller on their way to the Super Bowl. Now, Pittsburgh seeks revenge. Original action, the NFL on NBC, next. Made in America, played in America. Newsflash, son leads dad, 17-16. <laughs> Carl Pickens' second touchdown. Did you say that Jeff Blake was a bargain? He and Pickens making a statement is one of the best young passing, catching combinations in the NFL. Ball is fumbled around by McDuffie. Finally picks it up, and he's got a lane down the sideline, hurtling players to the 26-yard line. Covered at that point by James Joseph. Tom, as we go back to the touchdown, here's the pattern runner, here's the defender and the quarterback. The secret to this play is the arc he puts on the ball to allow Carl Pickens to run under it. There is very little move here by the receiver. It's just a foot race. Jeff Blake throws a big, high, arcing football that allows Carl Pickens to adjust to it and make the catch. Now here's the secret. Watch how quickly he gets his head turned around and look at the quarterback. He's looking, he runs a good 20 yards before Vincent does. He adjusts to the ball and makes the catch. Now Marino has to answer the Bengal touchdown. Play action on first down. Rifles it incomplete. Good coverage on fire by Roger Jones. And now the frustration of this uh, Miami offense beginning to set in here. The Bengals have made the big plays. The Dolphins have not. I think they expected the easy pickings with these cornerbacks from my, from Cincinnati. Actually, they've done a good job in coverage for most of the day, Tom. Second and ten for Marino. Around the 30-yard line and short of the first down, tackled by Tovar and Francis, the linebackers. Now you start seeing the fire in Dan Marino, the frustration, and he starts squinting a little more. And there's no question that Dan told us the clock is ticking on a trip to the Super Bowl for him, and he knows that he'd like to play, he said, maybe three or four more years, but he knows his chances are dwindling. Given time, he again goes to the middle of the defense to tight end Eric Green. Andre Collins, the tackle of Green, who's having his biggest day as a Dolphin. Yeah, they're uh, continuing to put linebackers on him. This one's through the zone. That big uh, target once again. Uh, now, Green is way out here to the right, and he runs this little pattern, and, and Marino just waits on him. Hey, there's contact with the defensive back. He absorbs the contact, makes himself a receiver. First down, Miami at the 45. Murray now going deep for Fryer down the sideline, and the closest man to it was the Bengals' Leonard Wheeler. Incomplete. Now, first long reception of the day for Miami was that hitch and go. They tried it twice again, and both times the uh, defensive back has stayed deep enough. And this one is thrown where Marino expected the receiver to be. He was not. <laughs> Get on down there, Irving. Second down. Byers out of the backfield, hit, and tackled by Roger Jones. Good play by the corner. Roger Jones having one of his best games. And now, you know, if this Bengal team was wondering what kind of a constitution character they had, the Dolphins have allowed them to stay into this now through three quarters. Hey. We belong. We're two and two. Dan Marino, who needed 37 completions to tie or pass Fran Tarkenton for the all-time, has hit 19 of 28. Catch. 
It's made short of the first down by Gary Clark. Oh, what a blunder. Clark in his 11th season over 600, almost 700 receptions didn't get enough for the first down. Yeah, but look at Marino. Marino knows, Clark knows he made a mistake. Instead of getting up in his face and yelling at him, he just went up to, hey, I know you know. Not a mistake you expect Gary Clark to make. It sends John Kidd out onto the field to punt in the final minute of the third quarter. Eric the enemy awaits the punt. Let's it bounce, and it does bound into the end zone for the touchback. So Marino misfires on that possession, and the Bengals will take over at their 20, leading by one. Amigos, estamos perdidos. Não esquenta. Eu peço mapa pelo correio eletrônico. Aqui. Eu tô rodando o S2 Warp Connect da IBM. Ele me dá acesso remoto ao servidor da minha rede. Ao meu work group, até a internet. Onde é que você arranjou isso? Eu liguei para um 800 call IBM. Goodyear retailers have lowered prices on America's number one brand. Lower! Lower! Everyday lows start at $19.99 and save 25% on other famous Goodyear tires. How low are the prices? Drop in and find out. When Dave Thomas created Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich, he used a whole breast fillet seasoned with his own blend of pepper and spices, but did he go too far? Cool. <laughs> Apparently not. Try Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich today. 17-16 Cincinnati over Miami. Don't forget tonight, must see TV NB Sunday, a brand new night of comedy. First at 7, 6 Central, it's Brotherly Love and Minor Adjustments. Then at 8 o'clock, 7 Central, an all new Mad About You, the Emmy winning Thursday comedy hit that has moved to Sunday. And that'll be followed by Hope and Gloria. A new night of must see TV comedy on NBC tonight. 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Some gasps around NFL stadiums as this score is flashed. Jeff Blake and the Bengals leading the Dolphins by one. Two touchdown passes by Blake to Carl Pickens. And the last one was beautiful as Blake, as you said, put that arc on it, let Pickens run under it, and he made a tremendous catch. Deep handoff to Harold Green. Green spins his way for nine yards. Jeff Cross finally makes the tackle. Now, Tom, they've won the ball just enough against uh, the best rushing defense in the league. And I think on offense, that's given the Bengals a little boost of confidence, too. Green just a bit gimpy as he makes it to the sideline, replaced by Eric Bieniemy. 89 yards rushing. That's uh, more than... The Dolphins' defense has allowed per game so far this season. Green has 55 of them. Fullback Cochran, his first carry, bursting free. To the 45-yard line and a Cincinnati first down. And it's the Bengals that have all the momentum as the third quarter comes to a close. Cincinnati 17, Miami 16. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Nicholas Turturro, Adam Arkin, two FBI agents who ended America's most brutal crime spree. Move in now! An all new In the Line of Duty, NBC Tonight. In 1970, Elton's very first song went gold. Then, Rocket Man went gold. Then, 103 of his other songs went gold. And now that he's touring with 38 musicians in a small army of stagehands. And uh, how will you be? Thing. Elton's gone gold. Money? These are gold. Oh, we'll need 371 wake-up calls. After all, nothing's got the power of gold. Nothing can stop you. No one can block you. Nothing can get in your way. Once you've seen the no annual fee NFL Visa Card, now available from MBNA America, the exclusive issuer of the NFL Team Visa Cards. This card lets you take your favorite team everywhere you take your visa. How do you get yours? Run, leap, 
Dash. Just get to the phone and call 1-800-NFL-9919. Apply now because when you use your no annual fee NFL visa, you get a low introductory annual percentage rate. Plus these crowd pleasers. The NFL 100 Greatest Touchdowns Video Free. NFL Report The Insider's Guide. And up to 20% discounts on select officially licensed NFL merchandise. So let nothing get in your way. Call 1-800-NFL-9919 now to apply for your no annual fee NFL visa with the NFL Shield or any team logo. Call 1-800-NFL-9919. NFL 9919 now. Operators of our audience, any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL is prohibited. Welcome back to Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Tom Hammond, Bob Trumpy, ready to start the fourth quarter. David Shula said he's always a bit embarrassed when his dad says how proud he is of him. But he is within sight of victory. If his Bengals can keep it going. There's the enemy with a nice run. He's doing his part. Penetrates Dolphin territory to the 48-yard line. Tackled by Gene Atkins and Brian Cox. You know, a strange thing about Eric the enemy, when he was with San Diego, they didn't use him as a receiver, didn't trust his hands, was always fumbling the ball. Uh, the Bengals consider him one of their better receivers out of the backfield. One man's trash is another man's treasure, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Now the surprising Cincinnati Bengals leading into the fourth quarter against the favored Dolphins. The enemy has gained 46 yards on four carries today. Pickens in motion. Blake with a short drop. Missed Darnay Scott. Scott made a quick break to the sideline, but the ball was not there. Tom, what the Bengals have done here and done a lot today, you see 61, Melvin Tootin coming off the uh, off the field here is the extra offensive tackle so they have basically one more offensive lineman than usual they're using two wide receivers a tight end a running back and an extra offensive lineman for protection two goes out and the other tight end comes in two of seven on third down conversions for Cincinnati it's Blake he gets almost a catch made by McGee that was an acrobatic attempt and I think it's incomplete. The Dolphins are acting like they have the football, but it is incomplete. Trace Armstrong and Chuck Klingbile hitting Jeff Blake just as he delivered the ball. You're going to see just about everybody in your picture in white jerseys try to get after the quarterback. It's picked up very, very well. Pressure comes from the outside. Cross, 91. Trace Armstrong, 93, finally get to him, but Jeff Blake is able to get the pass off. He just can't make the completion. He nearly caught it laying flat on his back. So Lee Johnson on fourth down will punt for the fifth time today. O.J. McDuffie awaiting. McDuffie's going to let it bounce, and it does hit at the one and then into the end zone. We'll take a timeout. Dolphins at the 20 when we return. Something fresh comes into your life at the exact moment you're ready for it. It's not coincidence. Aurora by Oldsmobile. See what happens when you demand better. Aurora. Actually, Abercrombie & Kent isn't in the business of travel at all. We're really in the business of satisfying people's dreams. You go to university and grow as a person. I believe travel is every bit as important as university. I think the American Express card gives one the confidence and the security to go to the farthest corners of the globe. Everybody knows the card, so it's just part of the culture. Introducing a breakthrough in bedding. The revolutionary Sealy Posturepedic. It's new, stronger, more sensitive. Now, the only foundation made from steel beams, not wood, is redesigned to be even stronger. Now, Sealy has a more sensitive sense and respond coil system, and its patented sensory arm senses and cushions your movement, then responds to your weight with increasing support, correct support, for the back support you need. Posturepedic support only from Sealy. 
The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Oldsmobile and your authorized Aurora retailers. By Sealy, posturepedic support only from Sealy. And by Pepsi AC Acid Controller. You can be heartburn free with new Pepsi AC. Tom Hammond, Bob Trumpy, Riverfront Stadium, 1402 remaining. Cincinnati leading Miami 17-16. Dolphins with a ball at their own point. Marino's pass complete to Green. Again, Green in the center of the defense with a catch to the 40-yard line and a first down. On this last play by Cincinnati McGee, as the ball bounces off one hand, this ball never touches the ground. Now there are Atkins and Stewart are fighting for the ball. That's a live ball. Are both feet inbounds? Yes. Uh, the Dolphins would have gotten the ball at about the same spot, but it, it should have been an interception for Miami. Dan Marino is over 300 yards passing for the first time this season, the 50th of his career. That one batted down as it left his hand and incomplete. Baseball score the Yankees leading Toronto five nothing at the top of the sixth inning a win by New York today puts them in the playoffs as the wild card and would eliminate the California Angels so the Yankees leading by five in the top of the sixth looking good to make it to the playoffs and don't forget playoff baseball action starts here on NBC this coming Tuesday night regional action coming your way all the games to be televised regionally Tuesday night here on NBC. Low snap picked up by Marino and again Green wrestled down by Steve Tovar about a yard short of the first down and Tom he has been their big receiver today uh, came into the game with just seven catches on the season and today alone he's got seven for ninety one in the touchdown so if they were wondering if uh, Eric Green was alive and well in the Dolphin uniform the answer is yes. Kirby flagged down as Kirby rams ahead for the first down to the 45 of the Bengals. Let's see the penalty will be against Miami. That'll nullify Kirby's first down run. Isn't that the 11th penalty now in the Dolphins? Indeed. Holding number 61. Offense. 10 yards. Third down. Center Tim Ruddy in his second year from Notre Dame. 11 penalties. 114 yards. See 61. He's right in the middle. He's on uh, Rucker, Keith Rucker, 95. Hard to tell where the uh, hole took place, but Ruddy, first season as a starter at center, big down here for both teams. Free play. It looked like the Bengals were offside, and Marino whips it complete. The catch made by Irving Fryer in front of Darrell Williams. What a catch. Offside, 98 defense, penalty declined, first down. Todd Kelly was offside, and Marino knew he had a free one. He found Irving Fryer. Well, watching, you can see the offsides first. Kelly is definitely in the neutral zone. There's no question about that. But watch Fryer stretch out for this one. He knows the importance of the catch. Beautifully done. Just inside 31 Williams. I think he catches it. I yeah, didn't I see the know. ball hit the turf there. I think he had his hand under it, but it was close. The veteran Fryer. First down Miami in Bengal territory at the 42. Cincinnati by one. Marino had a man open and missed him. It was Randall Hill. Uh, Randall just hesitated just instantly. On that uh, on that slant pass, what you have to do when you run that slant is keep firing inside. Marino, 350 yards passing now as Miami in the second half has gone almost exclusively to the air. Plenty of 
time. And the catch taken by Fryer. And Irving Fryer is to the 27 of Cincinnati, dropped by Steve Tovar. Again, great protection for Marino. It starts there. He has the ability to look all over the field. Fryer at the top of the screen, zone coverage. He finds a spot where he becomes a receiver. Uh, that, that's, again, just that veteran sense of how important this catch is. And look at the protection. They got five blocking on three. Danny's got plenty of time to look all over the field. First down at the 27. Kirby. He's to the 18-yard line. Rico McDonald twisted him to the turf. A shovel pass works again. And Marino 29 times has led Miami to victory from behind in the fourth quarter, trailing only John Elway in that department. Can he do it here? 10 48 and counting. Dolphins trail by only a point, second and one at the Bengal 18. That's the kind of day he's had. Waiting for Parmalee to break free. And Roger Jones was there too. Jones had a chance at the interception with the ball over both their heads. Yeah, out and up run by the running back out of the backfield. Take a shot at it on second down and short. David Shula leading Daddy Don. He's pacing like a Bengal Tiger over on the sideline. Yeah, he's getting lots of therapy on that uh, <laughs> knee cartilage surgery he had there. But he only needed a yard. Bracey Walker led the defensive charge from a strong safety spot. And it'll be close enough that they'll have to measure. Don't forget doubleheader week here, the NFL on NBC, with most of you seeing the Steelers and the Chargers in game two. Just short. Ooh, did he get his fourth down? Well, choice. And Stojanovic will come out on the field to try to recapture the lead for the Dolphins. But again, a moral victory for the Bengals. Terry Kirby tossing his helmet to the turf in disgust as he walks to the sidelines. Stojanovic lighting it up. It'll be a 35 yard attempt. Kirby not happy. Stojanovic has hit three for three today. 21, 36, and 46 yards. From 35, he got another one. Fourth field goal of the day by Pete Stojanovic. And the Miami Dolphins surge back into the lead. Sure, you've got a car. Got a dog. Even got some fun-loving friends. But have you got what it takes to be a mountain man? All it really takes are the two cool beers of the mountain man. Smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. So, be a mountain man. All you gotta do is head for the mountains. Something fresh comes into your life at the exact moment you're ready for it. It's not coincidence. Aurora by Oldsmobile. See what happens when you demand better. Aurora. Domino's presents Guts and the Guy's Guide to the Game. First of all, you gotta be prepared. Adjust seatage so as not to obscure the tube. Always keep a beverage with an easy grasp. And don't ever, ever forget to make the correct call. Exact the mundo! Got a piece. Domino's! 
Coming through with the ultimate deep dish. Thick and zesty crust. Cheese baked to the edge. Delivered free. Order any deep dish at menu price and get buffalo wings for $1.99. Gentlemen, let the games begin. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call now and have Domino's deliver the ultimate deep dish pizza. Because when it's got to be deep, it's got to be Domino's. Ten minutes left in Shula Bowl two, and the issue still in doubt. 1917 Miami. Artie Smith has got a good seat there <laughs> on the sideline. Right. Thought that was the tarp covering the team. Artie's backside. <laughs> a topsail, that's what it is, or a mainsail. Stojanovic. Done from the five. David Dunn, pretty good return, takes it out to the 29-yard line where Jeff Kopp makes the tackle. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, Sunday's must-see TV comedy hit, Mad About You. Tonight, Jamie's secret past is revealed. Then an all-new Hope and Gloria. Must-see TV comedy Sunday, starting with Mad About You, 8 o'clock, 7 Central, here on NBC. Well, it's up to Jeff Blake now to get some more points. 9.53 left. And Blake has hit 11 of 24, 125 yards. And look at the day Marino has had his best of the season to date, 374 yards. Blake puts it to Pickens. Can't get away, though. He'll be twisted down by J.B. Brown, who makes a sure tackle after Pickens a couple of series ago had beaten him for the touchdown. Well, Carl Pickens. The last 12 games, look at what he's done, Bob. He is uh, certainly one of the uh, up-and-coming receivers in the NFL, especially over the last dozen games. Yeah, no question about it, and he has the confidence of his quarterback, which is key, Tom. Jeff Blake is always looking for Carl Pickens. Whoops, movement up front. Pickens was saying there's some sort of extra sensory communication between he and Blake at times. Approachment, defense. Time and again, the Dolphins have been hurt. Number 99, five-yard penalty, first down. Chuck Klingbeil this time. 12 penalties now on the Miami Dolphins. Normally a team that has very few penalties. In fact, uh, some teams accused Don Shula when he was on the competition committee. He, he knew the rules of the officials, so they treated him a little differently than the rest of us. Well, by whatever means, they're usually a penalty-free team. The enemy. Play strung out for the Miami defense. Dwight Hollier then puts the clincher on the enemy for a short game. Clock at 8.50. Tom, again, uh, the Bengals, in trying to spread out the Dolphin defense, have come up with this formation that has worked quite a bit. Here's the extra offensive lineman up here. So you got a tight end, tackle, guard, center, guard, tackle, tackle. And what they're doing is spreading out the defense and then trying to, the Bengals are trying to find spots to run. Sets up a screen, complete to Cochran. Bangs his head and is turned back by Aubrey Beavers. Wow, what a collision. Beavers blasted Cochran. Man, haven't I seen those? You know, when they have those seatbelt commercials, <laughs> those dummies? I mean, it looks like uh, two dummies hitting here. This is a major league collision. Number 61, Whoa. reporting. Boy, Beavers stopped him dead in his tracks, didn't they? Goodness. In his second year from Oklahoma, former prep All-American in Houston, the top prospect in Texas and when he went to OU. Blake spots green. Dodge one, cuts back on another, and is twisted down. James Joseph made a block to spring Harold Green. Then Atkins was the only man stopping him from reaching the goal line. A fake quarterback sneak. Watch him dive down into the line like he's got the ball. He's going to fall. He stays on his feet. I don't know how. <laughs> Throws it out to Harold Green. Cothran with that big block. Oh, they've seen a lot of trickery today. The Miami Dolphins have. Keeps the drive alive. I wonder if Bruce Cosland has that little swallow the canary smile again. 
Blake on first down. Has his receiver. Short gain on the play. Catch made by Cothran and Beavers makes the tackle. There's he's too busy calling the next play. But he had to get some satisfaction out of that one. Blake with the. Uh, some more trickery. I don't know how you can design that and keep the quarterback on his feet, but they did. I mean, you were taking a heck of a chance there. Blake to the sideline and Bianami. Nice move. Bianami has the first down and still is going. He's to the 24 yard line. Brian Cox and Gene Atkins finally wrapped him up. The enemy with a sweet move and a gain of 15 yards. Also, a nice block out there by Jeff Hill, number 84. It's going to happen to your right as the enemy empties the backfield. Blake looking downfield, then goes to the outlet. Now, watch the block by 84 as the enemy cuts back inside. Coming right there. Just gives him just a little bit of space to get around Troy Vincent, stays on his feet, drive, stays alive. The enemy's had a nice game. 540 and counting. First down, Cincinnati. Draw handoff, Harold Green. Green has a gain of nine. Gene Atkins makes the tackle. Now, Tom, here's what that extra offensive lineman has done for the Bengals' offense against this Dolphins' defense. Here's the big offensive tackle. He blocks down, and Green runs right behind to watch the block. See, Walter steps out. See the way that 61 is all over Beavers, 53. And that's where off tackle the Bengals are gaining their yards. Five minutes left. Miami by two. And Blake with the play clock timeout, ticking Cincinnati. down, calls a timeout. With 4.59 left and the Bengals threatening. Snow will be increasing throughout the metro area. Throughout the thunderstorms with possible strong winds and hail will be moving. When you want to do it yourself, but you don't want to be under the weather, let Jiffy Lube change your oil with Pennzoil. Jiffy Lube the world's most experienced oil changers. That's why if it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. It used to be difficult for personal computers to do more than one thing at a time. Starting with Windows 95, it's easy. Start multitasking. Start Windows 95. If you ever end up in some Ben-Hur movie in your all-new Pontiac Sunfire GT with its powerful twin cam engine, you'll be glad you have a quick handling sport suspension. And of course, 150 horses. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Sunfire GT. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. Must see TV, NBC. Tonight on an all-new Mad About You, Paul and Jamie make the biggest decision of their entire married life. It's a small step for a couple of Bachmans, but it's a huge leap for Bachman kind. And Hope sending sexy letters to everyone. Why does it say message sent to global list? <laughs> all-new Hope and Gloria, NBC Tonight. 4.59 remaining, Shula Bowl 2, Miami clinging to a two-point edge, 19-17 over Jeff Blake and the Cincinnati Bengals. But Cincinnati has it second and two at the Dolphins, 16. David Shula with a chance for the biggest win of his young career. The up back, Cochran trying to get the tough first down yardage. Brian Cox hit him immediately, but Cochran with enough momentum to pick up the first down. And Tom, you saw a shot of David Shuley. You said uh, maybe the uh, biggest win of his young career. If he beats his dad, it, it may be the biggest win ever. I don't care what happens for the next 30 years if he's a head coach. This one, he will never forget. And neither will dad. 
with definite mixed feelings. From the 13, Cincinnati first down. Fake and then give to the enemy, picking his way forward, short gain, a couple of yards. Now what the Bengals can't do is be satisfied with three points here. I mean, they've done a good job. This drive started at the uh, at the 30. They've done a good job of getting the ball down the field. They got to try for the end zone here and not be complacent and just be happy with a short Doug Pelfrey field goal try. Been a long drive. This is the 10th play. The enemy in motion. Blake, the look in. Pickens for a touchdown of the day. Looks like Cincinnati is going to go for two. You see both coaches scrambling on the sideline. They're going to go for the two-point conversion. Cincinnati leads 23-19, going for two. Great. The fade, Scott knocked away. Good defense on the play by Troy Vincent. Of David Shula. So the lead is only 4 23 19. Couldn't hang on. Two hundred and eighty five horsepower. Two airbags. Tops. The Pontiac Firebird T Top and Firebird Convertible. Too cool. Taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies. Cool light. Tuesday night, postseason baseball returns with a division series. The Reds battle the Dodgers. Plus, the Red Sox, the Braves, the Indians, the AL West winner, and the Wild Cards. Regional coverage at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific starts Tuesday night on NBC. Twenty three nineteen David Shula is pacing now he can barely breathe at this point he is this close. Yeah watch this last move by Pickens to get by Troy Vincent just absolutely freezes one of the best corners in the game and David Shula's reaction. Hey what's the big deal. And I don't understand the choice to go for two here. I mean they're up by four. If you're up by six that's two field goals I don't know. But. So the lead is for as Lee Johnson kicks. McDuffie, nine yard line. OJ McDuffie to the 26 and a late flag is down. Adrian Hardy made the tackle. Here is the attempt to at the two point conversion. Hollier on the blitz. He's trying to get the ball to Darnay Scott. And David Shula. <laughs> but the Bengals get a break. The 13th penalty called on the Miami Dolphins is a hold on the kickoff return. And that catch by Pickens is eighth for 102 yards, his third touchdown of the day. So Marino has the ball at his own nine yard line with three. 29 on the clock. And three timeouts. 
They need a touchdown. Marino Chase. It'll be an incomplete pass. The rule Tom is, Kelly. Excuse me, Tom. The rule is grasp and control, and David Shula saying throw the flag. It should be a safety. Throw the flag. And he's saying, no, no, no. But only Bob McElwee, the referee, can call the, uh, the intentional grounding or a sack in the end zone. They almost got the two the hard way. Second down. Complete to Kirby. Kirby across the 15 to the 17 yard line, tripped up by Schelling and Tovar. Hurry up offense for the Dolphins. Facing a third down and short. Third and about two. Whips it complete to McDuffie. Wrestled out of bounds after picking up the first down at about the 20-yard line. A late flag over there. Roger Jones took him out of bounds, and the penalty marker. Bob McElwee will sort it out. Personal foul against the Bengals. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 27 defense. 15 yards from the end. Gracie Walker with a personal foul. I'm not sure they have the right number. Jones was the man in coverage, Tom. You called it correctly. At the end of the play, there's 24. 27 comes in, and I, I don't know what happens after that. But that, that if that was all... Gives the Dolphins a first down at the 37. Marino has it complete to Clark. Gary yeah, Clark's to midfield and a first down Miami. Tovar and Williams in the coverage and Marino has him cooking again. 2.35 left. On the sideline, wide open Hill. Catch made, first down, and David Shula beside himself, saying the man was out of bounds. I think I'd be reacting about the same way. <laughs> if I'm about, if I'm in this situation, there's Hill, where's one, two, set, whoa. Wow. Yep. David Shula right there to look at it. Marking the spot, second foot was out of bounds. Dave, you're right. He was right. Dolphins get a huge break. First down at the 39 of Cincinnati. Marino has McDuffie. He's inside the 30 to the 28. Boy, Steve this, Tovar. This is great use of that minute before the two-minute warning. It's not a two-minute drill. It's when ever you get the ball, you keep your timeouts. You keep the ball on the field. You use the two-minute warning to uh, stop the clock for your offense. And it stops here for the measurement. David Shula, man, he's worked so hard. And he had one go against him there. A bad call giving Hill a reception when he had one foot out of bounds. Yeah, I'm not sure he hadn't had three straight calls against him. The one in the end zone, the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the sideline, and that reception. can taste it. First foot is down. Second foot. Good. Good. And the clock will stop for the two-minute warning. Two minutes left in Shula Bowl 2. Will it be Papa or Son? We'll be back. 20 years and I still can't figure you out. Meaning? You finally found new Pepsid AC, something that really works for your heartburn, and you're trying something else? Well, you try things. But this one Pepsid AC pill controls acid nine hours. That's all day. Or prevents heartburn all night. Hmm. 
Tagamon HB can't claim that. And Pepsi AC has no drug interaction warnings. Tagamon HB does. You're always looking out for me, aren't you? You can be heartburn-free with new Pepsid AC, the strongest, longest acid controller. Laboratory tests show the Stanley Sharpshooter staple gun requires a mere 19 pounds of force to drive a staple flush. Our competitor's model requires just a bit more. The Sharpshooter, only from Stanley. We're all in search of answers. See us for the ones about cars. Coming up next on the NFL on NBC, a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. Last season, the San Diego Chargers stymied the Steelers in a thriller on their way to the Super Bowl. Now, Pittsburgh seeks revenge. Original action, the NFL on NBC, next. Made in America, played in America. It's Greg Gumbel in New York at RFK Stadium. It's all over. Gus Farad to Terry Allen after the juggling catch, bouncing off a defender, five yards and a touchdown. The Redskins knock off the previously unbeaten Dallas Cowboys, 27-23. Tom and Bob, back to you in Cincinnati. All right, Greg, one shocker today. Will this be number two? Cincinnati up 23-19, but Marino with a first down at the Bengal 28. Dan Marino has hit 30 of 44 passes. He's only six completions away from tying Fran Tarkenton for the all-time record. But right now, only thinking about victory. Stepping up and delivering. And a diving reception. They say incomplete. Hill was down in the ball, too. Leonard Wheeler covering on the play. Tom, there are several things that uh, make you a winner as you watch the end of this reception. No question that ball bounced. The Dolphins in a minute went from their own nine to the Bengals 29 before the two minute warning. With the eighth play coming up. And they will have all three timeouts left. Second down. Marino to Kirby. Terry Kirby to the 18. Stopped by Darrell Williams. He'll be close to a first down. Uh, right now, the fatigue factor. Just short. Gary Stevens on the left, the quarterback coach. Don Schuler, Bernie Kosar to the right. Trying to orchestrate this comeback for the Dolphins and Dan Marino. This play, this drive started at the Miami nine yard line. They have third and one at the 18. Shovel pass. Kirby stopped at the 15. Not only three yards, but he does have the first down. Bracey Walker, the tackle. Marino for McDuffie. Oh, and he caught it in traffic over Roger Jones. For David Shula, but McDuffie with a sparkling catch for the touchdown. What a drive. That was sensational. A thing of beauty engineered by the master Dan Marino. Stojanovic, the extra point. This would give him a three-point lead. And it does. And you know, if the Bengals had gone for the one-point extra point, they could still come back, kick the extra point, and win this game. As it is, it's the out-and-up by McDuffie, and he 
jumps over the cornerback and makes the catch. Well, that decision now to go for two. The best the Bengals can do. Well, certainly they can win if they score a touchdown, but they're in a position where a field goal would have won if they had gotten the single extra point as opposed to going for two. What a sensational play by McDuffie. The end of a sensational drive. And David Shula, he could taste it. He tasted sweet about three minutes ago. Now it tastes a little sour. <laughs> Does indeed. O.J. McDuffie, what a pretty grab. His first touchdown catch of the season. That's Otis James McDuffie. And Dan Marino doing what he does best. Well, Jeff Blake said he wanted this game to showcase his talents, to show that he belonged among the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. He's about to get his chance. Well, certainly kept everybody here. <laughs> and certainly, certainly those members of the Shula family, family visiting. Oyanovich <laughs> with the kick. David Dunn from the eight. Holding one man and then stood up. Penalty marker down. This could be crucial. Dwayne Dotson, another special teams tackle, has been brilliant on special teams. Personal foul, low block on the kicking team, number 49. 15 yards from the end of the play, first down. On the kicking team. Unusual to see that call is. Whistled against Don Shula's Dolphins. That was Melvin Tootin, number 61, slow getting up. Maybe he was the one who was chopped. Let's see who it is. Yeah, there's the player going down. It's number 49. That's Robert Wilson right on the legs of Melvin Tootin. Well, you, you get a big break for the Cincinnati Bengals. They'll start at their own 42-yard line. 58 oh. seconds. And Tom, that extra point. That extra point. He went for two. And one may have been enough. They need a field goal to tie. Blake steps up. Still looking. Caught by Pickens. Caught it on the rebound in front of Gene Atkins. Now they say no. Juggling the ball. They say no catch. When he bottles it the first time, it's tipped. Looks like he has it there. No, it's up around his helmet. I can't really tell from that angle, although here, this, should, this should show us perfectly. He's trying to hang on. No, ball is loose. Good call. Good call. Good call. Incomplete. Blake again in trouble and taken down. Sacked at the 39-yard line by Trace Armstrong. Timeout. Timeout. Cincinnati. Bengals take a timeout after the first sack of the day by the Miami defense. Trace Armstrong, the man they acquired from the Bears. Well, they wanted the experience in there. Armstrong, he's on the right guard. Coleman with pressure, too, makes him step up. Then Trace Armstrong on the second move comes inside. Kazerski, 64, first sack of the day. Coming up next, game two of the doubleheader. Most of you will see a rematch of the AFC Championship game from a year ago as the Chargers are in Three Rivers Stadium to take on the Steelers. Or Kansas City, Arizona, Denver, Seattle, Jacksonville, Houston. Game two of the doubleheader coming up next. The NFL on NBC. Third and 13 for the Cincinnati Bengals with 42 seconds left. They have one timeout remaining, trailing by three. Ball spotted back at the 39 of Cincinnati. Receivers McGee 
McGee didn't get out of bounds, but he does have a first down, and he's at the 42 of Miami. Oh, he should have gotten out of bounds. You don't fight for inches. You try to save seconds. Bengals up, ready to go, and Blake will down it. Incompletion stops the clock at 21 seconds. There is no reason to try to gain a yard or two more in this stage of the football game. Tony McGee should have just caught the ball, run right out of bounds. He makes a good catch. Here he is right here, runs the crossing pattern. Blake waits for him. This is the inopportune time to try to find a yard or two more. It doesn't help your team at all. You want time. Doug Pelfrey has hit a 47 yarder this season. He won the game over Indianapolis in overtime, game one. Blake. Oh, tough pass, incomplete, nearly intercepted, intended for McGee. Frankie Smith had it in his hands and dropped it. Oh, my goodness. Trying a little too hard there to get to his favorite receiver today, huh? Looking for McGee in traffic. Dangerous pass. Yeah, there was lots of traffic there. That's one of the things that Jeff Blake has done in his short career is he's not thrown the ball in traffic when he got away with one. 15 seconds, it's third down. Blake rifles it complete to Pickens. And Pickens with the first down at the 22. Timeout, eight seconds left. Ah, the two point conversion. After the touchdown, if they go for one, this field goal wins the game. Instead, they need a Pelfrey field goal to tie. Doug Pelfrey, who grew up in nearby northern Kentucky, played at the University of Kentucky. He makes the minimum NFL wage. He thinks he's underpaid. He has become one of the best young kickers in the league. But a big one coming up here, trying to tie the game with eight seconds left. His career long is 54 yards. This one would be about 54 yards. And Tom, in 1994, Doug Pelfrey's field goal was the final play in the three Bengal wins. Well, the ball spotted at the 27, so this would be a 44-yard field goal. They had 37 on the uh, scoreboard, but it is the 27. So a 44-yard field goal. Career-long 54, longest this year, 47. Lee Johnson, the punter, holds to put it into overtime. High snap, hold down, and no good. Trying for a little extra. It's just another win. <laughs> well, I don't know. If you've ever played one-on-one uh, -on -one in the driveway with your son, you know that it's a bittersweet taste. You wanted to win the game, but oh, when your sons do something, it's so, so heart-wrenching. And Doug Pelfrey, who grew up right here in this area, misses one of the biggest of his career. Fortunately, too, for the dad here, now it's father-son. While the game was going on, it was coach to coach, but now it's father-son. Okay. An embrace at midfield, and dad knows how Junior feels. Pelfrey's miss from 44 yards.